I didn't look after them. They were nice to me, but I was a savage. I would go into these houses, I will rob the whole house in, the, in 45 minutes and I'll be gone. Yeah. They ain't never see me again. For um, a, a violent events, but you're in here for a more bigger and dangerous events. You're thinking, you know what? It's curtains for you. I've got some bad news. I said, what's it? I've lost it. What did you lose? I've lost all of it. How? I left it somewhere, so that's your problem. I just know I've, I want my money by Friday. They're telling me so many things. They're saying to me, when, I, when we get you to the park, we're gonna break your kneecaps first. As we put, break your kneecaps, we're gonna bend every single finger. They're all just trying to destroy me mentally before I even got there. See if I touch that channel again, see if I don't break your fingers. I'm like, break my fingers. He went to go and change the channel. Backed up my thing straight away. Plugged him up in the neck. Wow. But then, as soon as I'd done that, I regretted my whole movement. I'm like, oh my God, what did you just do right now? I ran straight away, pressed the bell, boom. Because it's, it's harder to stab someone yeah. than to shoot them. You mm -hmm. can shoot someone from a distance, but to stab them, you have to come up personal. So imagine all these kids who are allowed to have guns. God forbid. <laughs> Beautiful girls in there. Wow, I saw one specifically, she was wearing a purple dress and she had the body of a lion. She was built like a beast. So I'm like, raw. <laughs> but he's not this guy, you know what? I can read his energy. I'm looking at him, bro, I'll, I'll wrap you up. In my mind, I'm saying, bro, I'll smoke you, bro. I don't know why you're talking like this. But you can't come to me and tell me, yo, you have to come do this. No, 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 I'm not that guy. Uh, if I want to do something, I'll do it. He used to be a gang leader. He's 45 years old. Oh, really? He's from South London. Can he, he tell a story as good as you, though? Nah. <laughs> a bit real with you. They don't. He, he, when, he's, when he heard that story, he said, bro, when you was on the wing, I never, never used to know that you was that funny. Yeah. I, said, I can't be funny around you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, bro? <laughs> get it? <laughs> if I don't get it, man, I can't show you. I can't show you my smiles, mate. <laughs> you have to put the poker face on in there. <laughs> Literally. Are these all going by any chance? All right, let's just keep going with the laughter. Come on. We, <laughs> we have got Kool-Aid. That's what's up. In the studio today. Man, when I watched Inspire for Change, and I saw him speak, and I saw his energy, and I saw his smile, I said to Ash, Ash, who does exist, we need to get Gulad on. This guy really knows how to tell a story. We're inundated with people who've got great stories, but sadly, the ability to tell them is a, is a whole nother level. So, man, huge thank you for coming on and, and congrats on, what, 20K plus subscribers in, what, six months? And in seven months. Seven months. Yeah, man. From my mobile phone. <gasps> from your mobile phone? No editing, just freestyle. You've been freestyling all the way from all the way Station? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Thank you. <laughs> was I? <laughs> yeah, literally. So, so um, before Gula tells you a story, we're just going to get his craziest story because we would like to start out with a bang on this channel. And that came about when you were getting bullied in a certain prison in a certain year, which I'll let you say. All right, cool. Boom. So you lot, this is how I start my stories with boom, yeah? All right. This time I was 19 years old, to be precise. I was in HMP Glen Parva in Leicester, Tiger Road. You understand? And after that, I was on remand. I caught a case. They remanded me. Me and my Cody, I had another Cody. His name was Madness. You understand? He got shipped out to Woodhill. I got shipped out to um, Parva and then boom. So I'm pissed now. I'm on the van. I'm saying, yo, you're going towards Parva. Like, they, 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 they're going to, um, you're going towards Parva now. So they're going to go, um, um, you have no one else with you. Because remember, I caught, and the case that I caught was a violent offence when I was on the roads. And that violent event, they end up taking all your clothes from you and your trainers. So I didn't even have my own boxes when I got to this jail. So that's it, your face is dry, you're coming to this prison, you have no money, 
You have no friends. It's just you, yourself, and your, your your induction pack. Literally. So then I'll come on the van, scuffling around, scuffling around, got to Glen Parva. As I got to fast forward, got to Glen Parva. Got to Glen Parva. I banged up with ribs. I love the names. Ribs. Ribs used to be MC from North West. You don't know my brother Ribs. <laughs> Good guy, Elijah. His name's Elijah. He looked after me, innit? At that this time, innit? As he looked after me, I'm like, all right, cool. Um, he looked out for me, but I remember I was on a van with one of my guys from my area, but he was a bigger guy than me, innit? He was an African, West African guy, a bit stocky and that. He's like, yo, yo, yo. He sees me, he heard my voice. He's like, you good, So yeah, that's me. So where are you going? I'm going Parva. I'm coming with you. But guess what they've done? They separated us straight away. Uh... Ah. I'm just there by myself. But I'm there with ribs now. Elijah, he's looking out for me. He's cool. He's a bit older than me. He's a bit more wiser than me. Cool. But then I'm eating the food in there. If anyone's aware, them times there. Um, Parva, at lunchtime, they used to give you chips in the packs, the bag. But the chips were rock hard. Or it literally will break your back tooth So I'm like Ooh, this place I'm starting losing weight Rapidly Then they, they separated me from ribs So now they took me to the next house block I don't know nobody So I'm on this house block I'm thinking to myself Bruv, this is going to be peak <laughs> But on top of that They banged me up With a, 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 a lifer a guy that had IPP already sentenced. But then I was a remand in the prisoner. So I was thinking to myself, whoa, 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 what's this about? I didn't think nothing of it. Big white fella, six foot four, at least 18, 16 stones. It's a big fella. I feel like they set me up. At that time, I was only nine stones. So it was double my weight and double my height. I'm only like five foot six. Do you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, what? I'm thinking, all right, cool. I've come into the cell. As I come into the cell, you know, you've got your duvet, everything like that. As soon as I came myself, he took my duvet off me. Oh. So I'm, like, I'm having that, mate. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm not a guy to get bullied. I'm not a bully. I'm a very smoker, but I don't like My blood rush. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not used to this. What's this about? He said, I'm have that, mate. I was like, cool, 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 cool. I think he's joking around. I think he's testing me. I think he's having a laugh. So he said, yeah, I'm going to have your mattress too. I said, what am I meant to sleep on? Sleep there, mate. Oh, fuck. I said, what? Sleep on the floor? I said, no, 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 I'm not sleeping on the floor. I think this guy's having a laugh. Went to go and get my dinner. I said, I went to go and get my dinner. Boom, came back with my cake. Came back with my rice, my peas and stuff like that. He said, I'll have your cake, mate. I'm there wilding. He's watching Simpsons and that. Farting, laughing, ha, ah, ha, Pissing, making so much noise, shitting. Not putting no incense on nothing. Oh. There's nothing. He's just taking violation. So I'm thinking, there. I'm just there. I didn't sleep that night. It's mad disrespect. Mad disrespect. So I'm just, you know, I'm not sleeping. I'm saying, bro, you're better off dying, bro. You're better off dying, bro. This is not life. This is hell right now. <laughs> Straight down. So I came out. But as I came out, who did I see? My mate on the wing. I've gone to him straight away. I said to him, bro, I'm banged up with one guy. Like he's taking the piss out of me. I, I need something in it. He's like, all right, cool. Let me sort something out. So as, as you got the toilet seats in prison, you can make them into satin. So he's made already something out of the toilet seat. So as he gave me that, he said, yo, do your thing. Hold your thing in it. Just do it. If he tries it, then just do your thing. I'm like, cool. I went back into the cell. As I went back into the cell, my man's chatting shit. I'm like, oh, can I watch something? I'm waiting. You know what? I'm actually waiting for him to do something because now... Nah, I've got something to retaliate with. So I said, no, nah, I want to watch it. I said, what are you talking about? Shut up. You're not even watching it. You should be facing the full wall right now. I said, facing the wall? I said, now nah, you're taking a piss. So I said, right, right, right. Then I went to go change the channel. He's got up now. He said, if I touch that channel again, see if I don't break your fingers. I'm like, break my fingers. He went to go change the channel. I backed up my thing straight away. Wow. Plugged him up in the neck. Wow. But then as soon as I'd done that, I regretted my whole movement. I'm like, oh my God, what did you just do right now? I ran straight away, pressed the bell, boom. The, 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 the prison officers, guards come in, they open the flap, they can see the man. I'm like, help, help, help. They come in, get out, get out, get out. Wah, wah, wah. Boom, the things are square and they're holding it. I'm thinking, oh my God, you're in jail for um, a, a, a violent offence, but you're in here for a more bigger and dangerous offence. You're thinking, you know what? It's curtains for you. Just took me now. 
as it took me now, it's so weird, you know, just took me now. As it took me, I'm like, all right, cool. I had prison clothes on anyway, so they took my prison clothes off me and gave me different clothes and they put that in forensic bags and stuff like that. So I'm down the book, I'm down the block, but there's a French guy. He's down the block as well. And he's only talking French, talking to himself. And I don't understand French, but I know a little bit so I'm saying. So I'm thinking, raw, like, what's going on down here? Two days later, guess who comes down the block? My mate. I said, what happened to you? Them several guys tried to put me on a diet. I had to do them in. I'm like, swear down. I said, my brother. And then waited, 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 waited. Outside, please come. So they come now. I said, outside, please come now. They give me a duty solicitor. They try to be, buy me a little Burger King on the way there. They try to, get me, try to nice me up, saying, oh, don't worry, it's going to be all right, mate. It's going to be all right. I mean, just, when you get there, just tell the truth, innit? Just tell the truth. I'm like, bro, like, this guy violated him in my cell. So I've got back in my cell. As I got back into my cell, I started crying. Tears started dropping. Some big tears started dropping from my eyes. And I'm thinking to myself, how are you in here right now for a bigger case? I started just raising my head to, to the Lord and said, God, please save me from this, man. Please, I can't take this. I can't bear this. They kept me down the block for another, they took me back to the police station and then back to the prison, sorry. They took, and then they kept me down to the block for another, maybe I was there for like two, three days. And then after that, stripped me out after, I was down there for two weeks. They tell him, yep, you got your van here. I said, where I'm going, felt him. I was like, hooray. I'm in the reception, get me all crip dancing <laughs> in the reception. I'm saying, yo, I'm going back to London. <laughs> Fuck these guys, man. I'm my language, sorry. And he's like, I'm saying, but these guys, man, I'm going back to London. I see one guy, he was from my area. So what are you saying? You're getting released? No, I'm going to felt him. Fuck, man, you look like you're getting out. You look like you're going home. <laughs> so nah, bro, I'm getting out of here, bro. This place is not the place right now. I'm telling you, bro. God, it's God may save you, man. God protect your hope. Went back to felt him. As I went to back to felt him now, I'm in felt him now. There's so many man them there from my area. So many guys. I'm there now. They put me on stage three bullying. That's the ultimate thing. They're telling me you can't even have showers with nobody. So man, they must saying, bruv, what are you in here for? What did you do? I'm telling him, bruv, a madness happened, bro. I don't even want to talk about it. But then people started thinking, what, are you, are you, are you on numbers, mate? I said, nah, bro, you know I'm not on no numbers, bro. It's a long story. So I'm just there. I remember I went there roughly around uh, spring times, hit around summer. I got my letter, NFA. Bob's your uncle. Hell yeah. Get me, fam. And just because they yeah. realized he was a lifer and I was Roman, who's not even meant to be in the same cell in the first place. So this set me up to fail. Yeah, that was a really messed up situation. And for people watching that who think that's too much extreme force um, retaliation, if Gulad hadn't done something at that point, he was going to be punked out for the rest of his prison stay. It is prison's just a violent place where it's survival of the fittest. And if you let people take liberty after liberty after liberty. This guy thought, right, I'm just going to fucking do anything to him now. Once he did, did one thing, accepted another thing, accepted another thing. If he hadn't struck back, next thing, this guy would be trying to take his booty. Yeah. Come on now. Literally. What would you, what would you guys have done? Would you have just given your booty up to this guy? No. You got to stand up for yourself one way or the other. And I'm not, I'm not condoning violence, but I'm saying it would have got horrible for Gulad if he hadn't stood up for himself. It would have got way, way worse. It wouldn't have just been one person coming at him. It would have been loads of people coming at him. So. It would have, it's not even that. It would have damaged me mentally. Yeah. It's not even a physical thing. You can, you can survive the physical thing, but it's the mentally that's going to break you for the rest of your life. And I will be traumatized for the rest of my life. And yeah. I know that. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people are traumatized. Because they haven't, but yeah, man. But yeah. Your reputation you. is everything. Yeah. You better stand up for yourself. 100%. All right, so let, let's go back to your full story then. All right. So where were you born? I was um, um, born in Djibouti. Djibouti is on the coast of Somalia. It got colonized by France, I think, in, in the 90s. So, yeah, I was born there, but my, my parents are originally from Somaliland, Hegesa. That's where my dad and my mom's from, and that's where they grew up, all my granddads and stuff like that. And what's it like there? It's amazing. I've never been there in my life. It's beautiful. It's like, oh, it's banging. I'm hoping to have a wine, my dream home to be in Djibouti one day. Is it on the coast? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It will be amazing, but definitely. So do you remember your early time 
Or is that you were too young? Did you say you moved at nine months? Nine months old, yeah. I came oh, to you can't remember anything. Nah, I can't hear anything. But I've been back no. there three, four times though. Uh, I went to Somalia three, four times. Yeah. Yeah. What's your first memories then? What, in the UK? Of your whole life? My memory is one, I remember I was in nursery and I was in Manchester. I was at Webster Primary School. So that's where you landed, Manchester? In Moss Side, yeah. Moss Side, straight, okay. Yeah. It was in Moss Side straight away. That's my neck of the woods. Yeah. Is I'm it? From, I'm from Witness. Where's Witness? It's at where Witness is in between Manchester and Liverpool. Is it? Yeah, is yeah. That, like, I thought Roncorn was in between that. Yeah, we're next to, right, right hey! above, we're right above Roncorn oh, on, yeah, on the yeah. opposite bank of the River Mersey. I had my ex, my ex was from Roncorn. Right. No, yeah. yeah. Roncorn's like, just like with my hometown, with us. A lot of Scousers. Yeah, a lot of Scousers, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're mad nutters. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Good people, but they're crazy. <laughs> 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 but yeah. So you ended up in Moss Side. Yeah, I ended up in Moss Side. Yeah. How long in Moss Side for? I was in Moss Side for maybe until six years. For six years? Yeah. So um, you were only a kid then. Yeah. You don't remember... Um, like the, the, you were too young for to see. I remember the, I had one guy. I remember I had one one of my best friends. I was five years old. He was my nursery. Um, I remember he was wearing Levi jeans. Yeah, black Levi jeans. And I knew he came from a good family because he was only five years old. <laughs> and when I got older and I realized what Levi was, I said, "Bro, man, I was swaggered. He came from a good family." I'm like, "Raw, he's living good." I wonder what he's doing now. He's probably one of the top guys around there. I reckon. I, I, I swear that I've got a good feeling, but you never know. Where did you go after Moss Side? Moss Side went to Hounslow, Hounslow West. Was that in West London next to oh, Southall? Yeah, Hounslow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Near, near where did you say? And in Southall. South. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Been to Hounslow. So Heathrow, 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 near Heathrow, Heathrow. Feltham, Feltham area. Yeah. Times, yeah. So is that where is that your base then? Is that where? No, nah, it was only there for six months. Then we moved to Southall. Yeah. And that's when I started going primary school there, and then from Southall, that's when that's when. Dennis the Menace got loose. So in school then, in Southall, did you like school or did, was, did, was there a problem? I just know, I didn't know how to concentrate. Yeah, because I, you... I had so much, I think ADHD, the time say they lie, they lie with me as ADHD. I didn't know how to control my energy. I had a lot of energy. You were behind in your reading and writing at that stage. But right. I was way, but I was, I was behind on reading and writing until I got to the age of 22. Yeah, self taught in prison. Yeah. Yeah. So, did anything in school interest you, like sports? Um, what interest? Maths and drama. Maths, I love, to, I love drama. Drama. <laughs> drama. What? Hit me in the stage. I'll be out there like, boom, boom. Yeah, me, I love drama. I, I love drama. But in primary school, like, I got kicked out in when I was seven years old. For what? Um, I broke the teacher's arm. Mm, was unfortunately, teacher, unfortunately. Was your teacher a jerk? No, she she was a lady and like she was just holding my arm and what she done, she was not meant to hold my wrist. She mm. held my wrist tightly and she was not letting it go and she was telling me, sit down, sit down. Yeah. And I was telling her, no, I don't want to sit down, sit down. And she kept squeezing, squeezing. So I just kept dangling her like that. Yeah. And I put my leg out by accident, sorry about that. And I put my leg out by accident and she dropped, landed on her elbow and broke it. Oh my goodness. And then she, I got kicked out from there. Yeah, well, you're only seven. Um, you got kicked out. And then in later years in school, what was your relationships like with other students? Bro, you know what? To be honest with you, then I went to another primary school. Then some kid tried to bully my brother. He was mm. a year younger than me. I fly kicked him on his back. Yeah. And then I got kicked out of that. And then from there, they banned me from every school in the Ealing Borough. No. And they said, yeah. So what did you do with your time? Well, from there, I was just at home. And then I was just at home, home, home. And I was at, as I was just at home, I was just one of them kids. I used to just wait outside people's school. Yeah. In year seven, I'll be that kid waiting at three o'clock, waiting for the kids to come out. Mm. Were you like on the video games or anything like that? Nah, interested in? I was, just, I was out here. Active. Active. I got my first um, criminal record when I was 10. What? Yeah, bro. For what? For, for shoplifting. Petty, but yeah. was shoplifting. I went all the way to central London. Yeah. I went to HMV. I robbed five um, in games. I tried to, I had a cap on. I tried to put it in my cap like that, put my cap back on. I had this big circle around my head. And then as soon as I got out, I gentleman said, wait one second, go to the back, went to the back. They took me to the police station. They kept me in the cells for six hours. Yeah. And then my mom came down. I was petrified about my mom finding out. I was more worried about that than anything else. And then, yeah, and then they released me and I got caution. And from there, it just started becoming a downhill skill. What was your first gang activity? Gang activity, I would say, I, to be honest with you, I was cool with all the in my area, I was all I was blessed with all the gang leaders. 
But I was not a man where I was never being a sheep or anything like that. I'm being a gang. I was on my own thing. And the people around me is either they were on what I was on or I'm not on what you're on. But you can't come to me and tell me, yo, you have to come do this. No, no, no. I'm not that guy. I, if I want to do something, I'll do it. You know what I mean? I follow, I set trends. I don't follow trends. And that's the kind of person I am. So the gang thing, I didn't really get into a car. I didn't, I didn't like taking orders. I don't like taking orders. How many gangs are there in that area then? Is there quite a few? Bro, to be honest with you, that like, there was one main gang um, that started the whole West London. He was a good friend of mine. It was MDP. He's currently in the jail. Um, in the, the guy who, um, who started the gang. And then that was the main gang. But now, like, it started, all the gang stuff started in South London, to be honest with you. They were the first people to actually start the gang thing. But then it started coming into West London when West people, West London people started going to jail and it started to and, and connecting to people from South London. So they started picking up their own their habits and stuff and they took them habits back to their estates. And before you know it, there was red and blue and yeah, man. Yeah, that's what Kieran Proverbs told us. It's all red and blue, bloods and crypts in Manchester. I was like, holy shit. That's what I remember that, that in America from the nineties. Look at that. Yeah, now it's all here. And now, what's that? Soon as this, remember, I said this now. Soon as this is happening in London, you're gonna hear it in probably 2025, or now you're gonna hear it in Australia. Yeah. You watch this. I don't know if they got gangs now in Australia, but you're gonna hear about the Reds and Blues in Australia real soon. Yeah. So, would you say that a lot of American gang culture crossed over to London? Hundred percent. And that 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 came by the reasons of YouTube. We didn't have a lot of access. We didn't knew what they were doing in America. But when YouTube started exposing these kind of things to us, we're like, raw. This is a bit bad. What they're really serious out there. What they got big guns like that normally. You, know, you think, wow, they're, <laughs> they're dangerous out there. Yeah. And I'm so glad that I didn't grow up in America. I know I'd have been alive for by now. It's crazy out there. I would have been shot dead or in life for I swear to God. Yeah. I know that. Because the way you have access to guns out there, if people had that in the UK, because it's it's harder to stab someone yeah. than to shoot them. You mm -hmm. can shoot someone from a distance, but to stab them, you have to come up personal. So imagine all these kids who are allowed to have guns. God forbid. They're everywhere guns. You can get yeah. like you can get like a Saturday night special for like fifty dollars in America, just a throwaway. Just bang, like that. and you'd bang out. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. You can get you get a packet of weed for that. <laughs> you get a free five or star dog for that. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> wow. All right. So you avoided then being recruited by the gangs you were like a lone wolf or did you have lone wolf yeah fellow fellow uh friends that you did I had a couple crimes don't with? get me wrong I had a couple of companions I had one of my good friends that I grew up with he gave me and gave me and he passed away unfortunately mm -hmm. he went to prison and he died in prison as well in his sleep he was a good friend of mine but I had I had see me the thing about it is the thing was because I grew up in care mm. Because I started becoming, at the age of 10, I got my criminal, then I had no school and stuff like that. Then local authorities, they started getting onto my mom, mm. saying social services and stuff like that. If you can't control your son, we're going to control him for you. Then she's like, you know what? She didn't want to sacrifice to her rest of her sons. So she said, you know what? If you can control him and manage him, then manage him yourself. So that started living with some Asian family, some Irish family, some Jamaican family, some Indian family. That, that dude, it's endless. So I'm... I was usually, I can adapt to any culture because I've been around so many different people and I know how people, I know how to act with certain people and I, I'm not to act with certain people. So yeah. And were those families all good with you? They looked after you? I didn't look after them. They were nice to me, but I was a savage. I will go into these houses, I'll rob the whole house in, the, in 45 minutes and I'll be gone. Yeah. They never see me again. And I get my, my social worker, poor Raj, good head, where are you? I'm out here. What's up? We need to find you another home. I was like, let me know where I have to go. Yeah? yeah. Cool. Go to like, hi, you're right, 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 bro. And then, yeah, man. Were you getting on the drugs at this age in your teens? Yeah, I, I started smoking weed at 12. Yeah. Um, I was White Widow was the first thing I started smoking, White Widow. Then I started drinking um, alcohol and, and uh, Alizé from the age of 14. Um, I lost my virginity in, in the children's home at age 13. Um, and yeah. So I'm so happy, man, that I started at early age, man. Oh, and what age were you when you got into more serious trouble with the cops? Well, to be honest with you, um, I got to the, to the ages of, let's say, 17, 18. That's when it started. That's when I started getting the serious. This is when the like it started becoming and tools. I had tools, items. Before it was just 
snatch and grab. It used to be street robberies and stuff like that. Grab that, grab this, rob my and get the grab that and the ped. Do TDA. I got arrested for TDA. It would be stuff like that. But when they got a bit older, it would be it would start it would start becoming violent. Where it would be armed robberies, it would be bookies and stuff like that. And then yeah, man. Did you ever get kidnapped? Unfortunately, yeah, I did. How old were you when that happened? I was nineteen. Do you want to give us that story? Well, basically, I come out of jail. I was 19 years old. I had a fat afro. I was hench. I was doc I was hench, you know. For a Somalian, for you to be hench them days there, whoa! There's not a lot of people out here like that. So I was just like, ha, 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 daddy's home type of thing. I was on that energy. You understand? So I was like, yeah, daddy's home. So I've come to my area. My mom was shocked. Mm. My mom didn't even come, I think my mom didn't even come visit me for the last eight months of my sentence. And then when she told me to pull up her door, she's like, is this my son? <laughs> she couldn't believe it. Is that you? I said, yeah, mom. She said, wow, my God. Then anyway, I'll be like, yeah. So now I'm thinking, yeah, I've got that image now. I think, you know what? What's missing? The money. So then there was one guy from my area, an older guy. I went up to him and said, yeah, you seem like you're, you know how to handle yourself. Do you want a bit of gear and stuff like that to make a bit of money? I said, yeah, sure, mate. Go on, give me some gear. Started flipping it, flipping it, flipping it, flipping it. As I started flipping it, um, I ended up, I was around people that I was not meant to be around. And I think they were scheming on me. They were, to keep, they were plotting on where I used to keep my drugs and stuff like that. So one time I got a reload and then I put it somewhere and I came back to the, and it was gone. So I was, it, was, it was not even that much. It was like maybe a couple, a couple in, in grand, maybe a grand. It, it depends on, back then it used to be a lot cheaper. But now it's a lot expensive, so so now the guy killed, calls me up, and I actually I, t I call him. I mentioned to him, yo, you know what, pal? I got some bad news. He said, what's it? I've lost it. What did you lose? I've lost all of it. How? I left it somewhere. So that's your problem. I just know I've I want my money by Friday. Take care. Boo. But before that, he was all nice to me. He was my best friend. I thought he had his the best interest in for me. But no, when I got roped and I lost something, that's when the true colors started showing. So I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be mad. I said, you know what? You know what? I started dodging him. I started dodging him. Then one of my, one of my mates gave me a call. He's not a mate. I thought an associate. I wouldn't call him as a mate. That's just too high. Um, he's an associate. He gave me a call. Yeah, go ahead. What's up? Philly's, Philly's looking for you. He's asking about you. I said, what is he saying? Oh, I was looking for you. I said, well, I ain't got his money right now. When I do have it, I'm going to give him a call. But guess what that fella goes do? He goes back to call the other fella. And guess what he says to him? I had a word with Matey. I had a word with Guled. He's telling me, tell him to jog on. What? I didn't say that. So now he's fuming. He's thinking, you know what? When I see this guy, I'm just going to do what I have to do. But then I rang up with one of my brother's mates. So I told him, you know what, I need some gear, I need to make some money. He said, all right, cool, I'll give you a little bit of something, something. I said, all right, cool. He said, meet me there. Then I went to the spot. But guess who's waiting for me there? The other fella that I owe money to with four other fellas. Damn! Oh. So my heart drops. And I just froze. I was like, shh. And then I dashed. <laughs> go, 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 go. As I dashed, I went into some... Um, slash bar slash restaurant place Yates's used to be called Yates's in Liburde. I went in there these guys come running in they're older than me they were like six seven years older I know I could look after myself but when you got five grown men around you you're thinking I don't know I'm not I, I don't have nothing on me so I'm thinking you know what dash get me as I dash they grab me as they grab me I'm just shrugging them off because I was big I was shrugging them I was shrugging them I was shrugging them but then I was using all my energy I was wasting so much energy I think, you know what? This is going to be long. I said, like, oh, come on, let's go, lads. I said, yeah, what's the worst thing they can do? They got me in a car now, some Pakistani fellas, some Asian fellas, or there. I said, don't worry, what did he do? We'll pay for his debt. No, it's personal. It's not even about the money no more. I'm like, whoa. They got me in the back of the car now. One sitting here, one sitting here. I'm sitting in the middle. And they're saying to me, they're telling me so many things. They're saying to me, when, I, when we get you to the park, we're going to break your kneecaps first. As we put, break your kneecaps, we're going to bend every single finger. They're all just trying to destroy me mentally before I even got there. So I'm thinking, why? They tied both of my shoelaces together. So they had me frog marching to, to some estate. Then they got me into the estate now. 
they're making phone calls. Guess who they rang? My mate. He said, got to put in my loudspeaker. Guess what? He said, what? We've got Guled with us. Don't do nothing to him. What did he say to you? Um, 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 um. I beg your pardon? Um, um, um. You know what? If you don't mention something, you will, I will have you in the back of this car in the next 10 minutes. So I'm saying, I'm thinking, my mate snaked me for a guy that don't even respect him. Why would you do that to me? I'm thinking, I felt gutted. That's why I lost, I had so much trust issues with building up relationships with friends and stuff like that. Because scenarios like that, your best mate done that to you. I'm thinking, ah, oh, you know what? Then he said, you know what? Then I made another food call, a couple more phone calls, da 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 da. Then one of my, one of my good pals, He's like, you know what, don't worry, I'll take the debt, I'll take the debt. I said, are you sure? Are, are you sure? I said, I'll take the debt. And I left. And I remember when I left, I was so humiliated. I got on the bus and some, some guy just sat, who was sitting next to me and he looked at me and said to me, are you okay? I said, brother, you don't even know what happened, brother. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right, you know, I'm all right, you know. And then I kept it moving and from there, yeah, man. Wow, what a story. Who was your wild Somalian bro? What D? Big up D, you know, <laughs> 10 times. You know who you are. It's my brother. D, he's a, he's, he's, a, he's a soldier. D, he's a soldier. He started off from Portland. HMP Portland. I think he's in the island. Is this down somewhere? In the coast somewhere. It's down there in it somewhere anyway, yeah? Portland. D, obviously me, at this time, me and D never used to be that close. Do you know what I mean? I used to see him vig vividly, but then... He ended up coming to my prison that I was in. I was in Rochester. As I was in Rochester. All of Guled's links are in the description box below the video if you want to subscribe to his channel and check out his endless stories. I've been addicted to his channel now for the past couple of months. His energy just resonates, as you can see today. Thank you. So, bam, so D now. D. I'm not going to mention his real name. No, I'll keep I, real I, names I, out. Know, we're real. We're real like that. We don't yeah. mention names, innit? Yeah. So, boom. D's there now. So, I've gone. I'm in Rochester now. So, I'm just going to the gym. Got my gym bag on me. <sighs> Whistling along. Living life. <sighs> what do I see? I see this fella. D. I said, Is that you? I said, yeah, that's me. I said, what are you doing here? I just come back from Portland. I just came from Portland. I got shipped out of Portland. In my mind, I'm thinking, Portland's a very, very dangerous tale. How the hell are you getting shipped out from Portland? They say, what? Tell me who's the who, who's the biggest fella in this jail? Who runs this prison? I'm like, why? I want to take him out. I said, you're having a laugh. <sighs> Backed it out. Some homemade knife. Some jail. Oh, I'm yeah. um, like, what are you doing? Put that away. Put that away. He's like, I want to come on your wing. I'm mine. I'm thinking, you're not coming on my wing, mate. I can, I'm, I'm all right on my <laughs> wing, bro. I'm like, I'm cool. I've got pals on there now. I'm not even trying to get anyone hurt. Anyway, he ended up getting onto my wing. And he just, he was havoc, man. He terrorized the whole jail. It took him three weeks to be in that jail. Then he got shipped out. He terrorized the whole jail. He had, he was down the block with someone and he had manned them inside the exercise yard in the same cage running around and he backed out on them. Imagine you're in the block already and you're pulling out and you're chasing people around. Now they're locked in this cage and they can't even get away from you. <laughs> it's, it's mad. Mad. But there's so much stories regarding him, my man. I've got it on my channel anyway. Um, but him, he's a, yeah, he's a soldier, man. He's a very good guy. But what, one thing about him, he's the help, He's the one who helped me reform my life around. That's why I'm so. That's why I speak highly about him because he reformed his life around. You understand? So when he came to me, for me to look at him and say, you know what, this fella, if he can change the amount of things he's done and the amount of violence that he's got gone through. Don't get me wrong, I've been through violence, but his thing is a whole different level. If he can change, and he, I say, you know what, I can start humbling myself. Why were you in Rochester? I was in Rochester at that time. Um, I was in there for a bookies, isn't it? Bookies. Uh, yeah, then bookies and a betting and sorry and a betting shop. I robbed the betting shop. I see. Okay. Yeah, I jumped. I lost my money. I jumped the till. What was your sentence for that? Huh? You lost your money at the bookies, so you jumped the till. Yeah. Give it. Give it back. <laughs> give it. 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 <laughs> Literally, <laughs> what was your sentence for that one? They gave me what at that time it was. I went guilty. I got. I went guilty. They gave me thirty months. 
30 months yeah, straight just away. do 50 percent it's a 15 months no, 15 do half months, yeah half so, of you do, it. so you get so yeah and three months what other crazy stuff happened during those 15 months what the way man had it set it out so boom i'm in jail now obviously i had my mate called b b was in that job before me b he was a soldier but b he was the same size as a, as a stick but he was knocking people out for fun so when I saw him, he was cool. He was only there for a few weeks and stuff like that. And he got shipped out. After he got shipped out, what I tend to do, I would bring the Somalian brothers around me. You understand? I would have a little small... Because when I was on the roads, I was around a lot of Somalians, innit? You know what I mean? So I'll get one young Somalian brother. He's probably 18. And he's probably 18, a bit fragile. So don't worry, I'll put him under my wing. Don't worry, I'm going to look after you. But not on a violent thing. Just, I've got you. You're my brother, innit? We do that. We form a little gathering have a little gang together as we've got like 15 of us so it started terrorizing the whole prison are there many somalis in the uk prison system right now unfortunately yes not back in my days there was only a few of us but now it's full and during that sentence then where you, you sounds like you're pretty wild you hadn't started settling down and reading and writing and stuff <laughs> yeah well, how did you pass your day like did you have like a fitness workout routine or anything well, I was down the block for a bit, but Rochester they used to Gordon was it Gordon Brown? Yeah. He used to he was the labor, so he used to feed us good them days, I remember. Right. Yeah. So there was no there was no there was no jail cuts and nothing, budget cuts and stuff like that. So they used to feed us good. So I used to eat good around there, but they would take me down the block. But as they had me down the block, like I ain't got no TV or nothing like that. So I'm on a tip like, what am I gonna do? And obviously I'd never been to a secondary school, so I didn't even know how to read. So I used to get books and they said, what, you, what can you give me? Give me newspapers. They used to give me the mirror. The, the govs, again, they used to give me the mirror day. I used to be, I'd be nice to them. So sort me out, give me the mirror at the end, at the end of the evening. If you behave yourself, we're going to give you a piece. we we'll give you the paper. If not, then you're not going to get the paper for today. Cool. I used to get the paper. So you know, give me some books. Then I used to join up the letters, can, the. I remember how to get me read that. Then I'll just join it up together, force myself. And eventually I learned how to read. Wow. That's fucking inspirational, that is. So in the block, you were visited by Play Dirty? Oh, Play, oh, Bouncer. My brother. Yeah, Bouncer. What comes was in. that story? But he's a smart man, though. Because he, he knew how the jail system was. Get me? He, he, was, he was on as much as I on. He was violent and stuff like that. But he knew how to play the system. And he was very smart with that. So I'm down the block. As I'm down the block, what I used to do as well, I used to ask for listeners. Just to get a bit, a bit of company, you know what I mean? It's just me and you just sitting down. Why do you just sit sitting in my soul? Just me and you. That day, day we'll go fast and we could talk about anything, football, anything. So then, but I didn't expect Bouncer to come in because I had an image that I was trying to put, uh, portray in the prison and stuff like that. So I'm saying, yeah, I need a listener. Yeah, yeah, I'm losing it, mate. I'm losing it. But deep down inside, it was actually breaking me. Like, I was, I was trying to stay tough, but it was breaking me. But I was trying to stay tough. But anyway, fast forward. Bounce is coming now. So as Bouncer, Miles, Miles Harris, yeah? He's come down now, yeah? I say he's come down now. So yeah, they open the door. Sh -sh -sh. Boom, I see him in his green t-shirt. Salam alaikum, Ak. I looked at him. Alaikum salam. He's Muslim, Muslim brother. Salam him straight away. What are you saying, Ak? You good, yeah? Yeah, I'm all right. So what are you saying? You need someone to talk to. Do I look like someone that needs to be talking to? <laughs> what are you talking about? Rah, 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 that started acting, putting, you know what I mean? Trying to show him, like, get me, there was nothing wrong and stuff like that. He's like, what? You got, you got, he said, when you going home? Bro, I'm going home in a couple of weeks, you know? They actually made me go home from the block because they didn't want me to run riots because I used to threaten the govs, man. Like a silly guy. I used to run my govs. See, the last week, you guys are gone. I'm going to make your life hell. The information goes back to the governor. Get him down the block, man. He's threatening us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's a little rascal, innit? I don't I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it, but I just I don't know, man. It's us against them, innit? You understand? That's the mentality, yeah. yeah. It's us against them, innit? So anyway, he's come down, did it, spoke, 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 and yeah, we spoke a few times and they released me from the block and yeah, man. And that's my time in Rochester. What was what happened when you had a five tuner debt to a lifer? Well basically I was twenty one years of age at this time. Unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of people sending me money on the out. My mum, God, God bless her soul, she was very, very supportive. She helped me to the best of her abilities and with her education. 
But she thought 30 quid would be enough for me to survive on three months. And that's a 10 hour month. That's nothing. 15 quid on your account, ain't she? And plus I was going down the block, so I'm not even on the wing like that. So what I'd done was I started playing poker. Someone taught me how to play poker. So I said, you know, I can make a bit of money on this. I started flipping up. I started winning the first times. I started, I had noodles, I had tuna, I had mackerel. I was living good. I was like, all right, we could do this. This time now, I think I had, I think I had something and I think I had a full house. I had, I had trip, trip, I remember I had three, I had triplet, I had, I had three of a pet and three of a kind. Yeah, I had three of a kind and he had a full house. And I thought I had it. My heart dropped. And he's like, you owe me five tuners. I know it's not a lot, but in jail at that time is a lot. It's principles. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to put it on the list next week, innit? So no, I want them now. I'm like, bro, I, I've got six tuners in my cell right now. I eat one tuna a day after I go to the gym, work out. This is just for my gains. Allow me, please. I want my tuners now. I'm like, brother, this guy's not having it. I'm just playing. I'm in my, I'm in my cell now. My cellmate is enhanced. Get me, may, may, may God rest his soul, man. Crooks as well. He'd passed away as well on holiday. And um, he was there and he used to have the PlayStation. Um, as he uh, had the PlayStation, um, I was playing pro, it was pro, pro evolution soccer, banging out, banging out with my mate GB, Gravel, Dunno from Hackney, good brother. And he was playing, playing. This Fox guy's come in now. But Fox, he's a lifer. He's a big guy. You understand? I don't know where he's from. I think he's from North or something like that. I'm not sure. He's a lifer. He's a big guy now. He's coming to the song, some Aggie thing that. Like, Where's my tuners? Don't ever in your life play. Poker, you can't afford it. You tramp. Said that inside the cell and he, he left the cell. Amongst them lines, he said something like that amongst the lines. So my heart racing. I've looked at my mate, GB. GB, did my man just violate me, bro? GB has a wind up. He said, bro, you got violated, bro. I said, fuck this shit. I got up. I'm not having this. He's next door to me, isn't it? He's not next door, it's all next door to me. As soon as he's in the cell next door to me, and um, what ends up happening, I've gone into his cell. But I remember vividly, I had a Ralph Lauren t-shirt and, and it, was, it was a collar t-shirt and I had that from the streets and it was nice and it was the only t-shirt I had. And I said to me, if I get into a fight right now, this guy's going to rip my, your favorite t-shirt, bro. And you ain't got no other t-shirts and I've got a vest underneath. So I said, you know what? I went into the cell as I went to, what the F are you doing in my cell? Get out of my cell now. You fucking little prick. But as he's walking towards the door and he's trying to open the door, I've took up the t-shirt. And I've got my, I said, you know what? If I take it today, this t-shirt ain't getting it. At least my t-shirt is going to be in one piece. Cool. Soon he's gone to the door, boom, he's walking towards the door. Cracked him from the side straight away. I said, you know what? Make this sure this is your hardest bang. Cracked him. Soon as I cracked him, I see him dizzy. I was like, yes, I've got him. Headbutt. Bye, bye, bye. Started kneeing him, kneeing him, kneeing him. Everyone on the landing started coming over, looking over like that. Boom, 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 boom. He said, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I started laying him in, laying him in, laying him. Because I'm angry and I'm thinking, this guy violated me for no reason. Laying him in, laying him in, laying him in. My cellmate, Crooks, he's come running up. And I remember Benji. Wagwan Benji. Benji from Northwest. Bunch, he's gone to Renji. Benji's holding the door. He said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Good having a fight. We got this, you know. I said, are you sure? He's got it. And on top of that, he's... Now, anyway, I've, he's dizzy now. Boom, 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 boom. I mashed him up anyway. As I mashed him up, I've come out of my cell. But I, at the night, I, when I heard, so, I knew I'd, I'd done something to him. So I know the ball's in his court. So he's willing to retaliate. And I don't like that. I'd rather someone do something to me and it's on, the ball's on my court if I want to do something. So it gives me time. But with him, you never know when he's going to come for you. So I'm thinking, you know what? We can go out again, you know? So I'm saying, brother, out the window. I said, brother, are you all right, bro? Or what, do we need to do something tomorrow? My man saying nothing, innit? I said to him, so you know what, bro? End of the day, you was in debt, bro. You owed him the tuners. Maybe the way you sp he spoke to you was not cool. However, you still owe me the tuners. Guess what I end up doing? I woke up in the morning, went to his cell, gave him five tuners. I said, here you go. But the way you spoke to me, I didn't like it, bro. I didn't, all the, all the geezers on the wing, I said, you know what, you're a top lad. My couple of the man, said, why are you giving him back the tuners? I said, bro, he owned the tuners, bro. Tuners are not mine. 
It's just the way he spoke to me, I didn't like. You understand? And he, he downgraded me and I don't like that. And I just gave him his tuners and he was on the wing for a while. His face was mashed up. Then he didn't feel comfortable. So he, he just went to another wing. And that's it. Again, it's the respect thing, isn't it? If people talk to you like that, they're basically calling you out, aren't they? Literally, yeah. And if you don't respond, this is just prison life, isn't it? It's normal. And then the beef squashed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What happened when you had a big cellmate? It was not a big cellmate. My cellmate had a big guy that run the wing. So this is what happened now, yeah? It's the same wing as well. But this is when I just came on. I'm fresh on the wing. They put me in the cell. As I'm in the cell, this one guy running the whole wing. Half of the Joe, half of the Joe who's running. Debo, big up Debo, my brother Debo, who's running half of the job. Easily, people feared him. I knew they feared him. And I liked the way his aura was, but watch this now. I'm banged up with one guy. He's called Butts. Butts is his nickname. Butts, what is Butts? That, I know, Butts, <laughs> it. I know, I know. <laughs> they called him Butts, innit? But Butts used to clean cells just for a bit of extra canteen and a little, you know what I mean? Just, everyone's got the job, innit? You know what I mean? Let you do your thing, innit? So now he was on the Debo. As he was on the Debo, I'm banged up with Butts. But Butts is a good guy. Banged He's, up with Butts. Yeah, I'm banged up. Yeah, I'm in the cell, same side. Yeah, banged up with Butts. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So I'm banged up with Butts now. As I'm banged up with Butts, he's acting, he's acting like a hard nut. But he's not this guy. You know what? I can read his energy. I'm looking at him, bro. I'll, I'll wrap you up. In my mind, I'm saying, bro, I'll smoke you, bro. I don't know why you're talking like this. He's talking gas. He's putting up the, he's putting the volume up. He's in the toilet. He's doing poops. He's not paying no incense. He's violating. I'm asking him, yo, can I watch something? He don't want to tell me what, uh, he's telling me he controls the cell. So you know what? This is going to start. I know, in it? This is, I know where this is going right now. So if I don't put a line, draw a line under it right now, it's just going to get worse. Huh? I said, bun this, watch this. I know the night govs come past at nine or eight, roughly, because they're doing the last checks. As soon as that last check went out and he went back in his office, <laughs> Butts got wrapped up. Let me shut up. Now, chill. He's chill now. He's got, he woke up in the morning straight away. Guess where he's gone to? He's gone to Debo. And guess what? Like an idiot, what did I do? I'm chilling my soul like a sitting duck waiting to get hit. I'm just there. I should have been on the landing or something like that, but I'm just there waiting for God knows what I'm waiting for. Bam! Debo come to the cell now. Debo's a big guy. I remember. If you know what big guy, he's clean and pressing. 20 bar, 50 each size, 120. So he's clean and pressing like that. He's a beast. Watch this now. He's coming to the cell now. So what he's saying? He said, he's come to me straight away. Grab my throat. Mm. Strangled me. <sighs> Don't ever touch him in your life. You get it? Do you in? Just there violating, so I'm not I'm wounded now. I'm thinking, nah, I'm not having this, bruv. Like, I'm not having this. I don't like this. I don't like this feeling. This feeling that I've got on me right now, I've been humiliated. I don't like this feeling. I've gone to one of my pals now. He, I knew him from the other prison that I got shipped out from Scrubs. I said to you, mate, listen, I need to sort this guy out. Like, uh, it's, oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's basically like a scenario like that. I need to sort this guy out. And psh, this is what I want, innit? He said, are you sure? You want to sort him? Bro, I'm sorting him out, bro. I, I, like, I don't care. I ain't got nothing to lose. I've just been humiliated. What's the worst that can happen? That was the mentality. So, you know what? Skull mosque was on a Friday, I remember. It's a skull mosque. Go relax. Go mosque. Come back from the mosque and tell me how you feel afterwards. But guess what? I end up going mosque. I've gone mosque now. Who's walked in? Big Mo. Big Mo is a tank now. I've only seen Big Mo maybe three, four times when I was on the roads. But the last time I saw him, he was in the youth court together, acting youth court. And he was a rowdy one. So he looked at me, got it! I'm like, homie! <laughs> Big hug. Gave him a hug. That, that, that was good to see him. I said, what are you saying, man? Did they, when did you come? I said, I came, I came like two days ago. I said, what? Is there any spaces on your wing? On my wing? Remember, Butts just left my cell. My wing? Brother, I've got a whole cell for you, big man. Welcome to my wing. I told him, gave him my cell number, da -da -da -da, my wing I'm on. Da -da -da -da. So yo, get to go to go on your wing. Tell the gov you on that you want to go on that cell bubble. Guess who's on the wing an hour later? Big Mo. So now I've got someone. That's how you know someone's looking up on me. So I got Big Mo now to protect me. So I'm like, 
Yeah, I've, I've gone into self, but I knew I never mentioned nothing down the moss to Big Mo. I'm just saying, like, about, get, about Debo. Yeah, I'll be like, I'm telling you, come when he was in the cell and the cell was closed and we was eating our lunch during lunch time. Don't tell a lie, we was eating like during dinner time. Tell a lie because we were at Moscow at two, we had dinner at five, and yeah, I was telling him during then. Watch this now, yeah. As that happened, I'm chatting to him, chatting to him, chatting to him. So guess what? This is what happened. I wrapped up my man last night. As I wrapped him up, boom, my man got involved. Um, that's the angle. It's coming the wind now. As we, uh, we, we come on the source, we come to the landing. As we come to the landing, remember, Debo was playing table tennis. And then me and me and me and Big Mo was just there standing like that. So Big Mo was like, Oof, he put his arm around me like that. Big fella. Listen, guys, pay attention. Anyone's got an issue with him, let me know now, because they got an issue with me. And he looked at him like that. Guy's got a lot of energy. He's coming this up. Big Mo come on the table tennis table. As he's coming on the table tennis table now, playing table. He's playing in, in D ball, but as he's playing D ball, he's hitting it hard. <laughs> Whack! <laughs> I'm like, raw! Big Mo's playing. He's a bit brave, isn't it? And I was like, I believe in you. So <laughs> whacking it hard, whacking it hard, whacking it hard. <laughs> whacking it hard, whacking it hard. But they left it like that. As they left it like that, we're on the wing together. They end up being friends. Car Debo and Big Mo, the only ones who could bench the same thing. So they end up being gym buddies. They end up being good friends. And I was all right. I was all right. I was like, right, cool. I ain't got nothing to prove. I've done my thing to Bart's. Obviously, whatever happened, happened. Boom. Things happen. We move on. It's cool, isn't it? Because I know if me and Big Mo retaliate right now and we do anything to anybody, we're going to get separated and I'm going to be by myself again. And we don't want that. So we're playing the art of war. Yeah, I mean, we're chilling, <laughs> bam, we're chilling now. So I, I've been chilling, chilling, chilling. Eventually, a few months down the line, being him and Big Mo end up being best friends. They end up getting shipped out together. They got shipped out together. They had a riot. They end up being friends. And guess who? And now they're on the road. Now they're on, they're on the roads training together in gym. Wow, what a coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> what that's mad, isn't it? <laughs> and they're best friends now. They're good friends. I see them in the gym training all together. Like, Raw, imagine that. <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> So we're at age 21 right now in your story. Any, and is there any other crazy stories before that that I've missed out that you can think of? Um, my first night when I first went to prison. My yeah. first one, I was 15. Do that one. Should we do that one, yeah? Yeah. It's Huntingham. I got sentenced for robbery. We got sentenced for robbery. Okay, I got sentenced to robbery. Got six months to do three. Baby, like, like baby food, innit? A little light bird, three months. Unfortunately, gave me God rest my father's soul. Elena had his store. My dad passed away at the same time. Bro. Oh man, that's like, rough. I, I didn't even get to go because I went to Somalia, mm. and then the funeral. That's the only reason why I came back. I left for because of that case. My mom's like she was worried for me to go to prison. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna get you out of here. Come, 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 come. I'm gonna take you to Somalia. I went to Somalia. Then end up my dad ended up passing away while I was in Somalia. Mm. Then I was like, you know what? I want to come back for the funeral. Didn't even get managed to reach back to the funeral, but I was already wanted anyway. So when I got to the um, airport, they nicked me, nicked me. I got sentenced to six months. All right, cool. Six months to free. First night center. Informed the govs, told them, listen, I lost my dad. Oh, sorry to hear. How long ago? Six weeks ago. Ah, oh, I'm sorry to hear. What can we do for you? They put me in an app doc. They get some app doc out to see if you're suicidal or anything like that. The only thing they'd done for me was just switch on the light. I had my light on all night. I couldn't even sleep now. And they thought they were helping me. So now that's happened now. They took me off the first night center. They took me on to Mountbatten B. No, tell a lie. Mountbatten A. Took me on Mountbatten A. Went on their night, first night center. I was on their first night. I'm 15 years old. Chilling, chilling. I was in my cell 22. Cell 20 at the bottom. Cell 22. A cell 22, come to your door. I'm like, oh my God. Cell 22. I'm like, brother, I swear you're, I'm saying to myself, I swear you're 22. Come to it. Hello? I say, yeah. What you got for me? Huh? I'm saying, what you got for me? I ain't got nothing for you. Listen, when I see you in the morning, I'm going to wrap you up. Wrap you up, I'm going to punch you up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat you up, innit? I'm like, 
Oh, my man sounds aggressive over there. What's wrong with him? Sounds like some serious, dangerous guy. But then there's some next guy come to the door called Bones from Holly Street. Big up Bones, innit? Um, get me. Um, he's come to the door and I said, what? The guy, dude, the kid, the kid's name was um, Patterson. Hey, Patterson, shut up, man. He got told. Shut up and stop speaking to the guy like that, man. You don't even know him. All right, cool, cool, cool. I was a bit rough, rough, rough the first night. I was a bit scared, man, thinking, wonder what's going to happen in the morning. Is he going to get violent? Come out, my, come out my cell. I see one, the most fraggle looking guy. I said, it was you talking like that last night. You. You're Patterson. I said, oh my God, fam. I thought you were some six foot six guy. I said, you. I said, bleed me neck, mate. You gave me a run for my money there. <laughs> I was thinking, wow, I didn't expect you to be like that. I thought you'd be, I thought you'd be, I thought you were gonna be a hench and stuff, bro. You're just stuff. I can have you, mate. Don't worry about it. I can I can do you in. And I was like, yeah, and that's it. that's it. That was the first night I went to prison and from there, I was like, right, got released. They gave me a child the travel, they give you a, a, a travel card when you get released, 43 pounds, and that's it on your back, son. Mm. All right, so you get out of the sentence that you did for robbing the betting shop. Yeah. And what was your life like when you got out? You know, when I, well, how old was I when I, when I was like 20? What was that? What was that? What? 19, innit? No, no, the betting shop. When I got out like that, then, then. Oh, so, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I got out. But guess what they've done? They get you out. They put you in a bell hostel. So now I'm in a bell hostel. Guess where? In South London. South East London. And guess who I was fighting with? A lot of South and people in jail. And guess what they've done? They put me on their estate. Oh. Crumble. I'm thinking, oh my days, bro. And guess what they've done? They banned me from the whole West London. So how was I meant to stand on my own two feet, bro? There's no help. There's no structure. There's no support. Plus you put me in some area that I even didn't know. You set me up to fail. I'm walking to da 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 and I end up meet, uh, meeting up. What did I end up doing? I end up meeting up with a guy called Dwayne. He reached out to me a couple of weeks ago. He worked in fitness first. He gave me he gave me some voluntary work there. I was working there for a bit, doing a bit of voluntary work. Mumped into a couple of guys. But the thing is, the guys that I had issues with in prison, it was not a thing where when I get out, it's going to be an issue. We already dealt with the issue in prison. So for you to do something when you get out, that means you're a coward, mate. We dealt with it when we had the chance to, innit? But then I see a few guys that I had a few fights with and stuff like that. They looked at me, what good are we doing around here? I'll come to see my cousin. I'm not telling them I live around here. I said, I'll come to see my cousin. I'm just cutting through. Yeah, you're right though. You say, I'm good, man. How are you? Said, yeah, this is my block. Said, yeah, it's your block. Yeah, I said, cool, bro. Nothing to do with me. That's your block, bro. I'm a good guy. And just kept it moving. Yeah, man. How long did that last? That lasted for a while, then they end up moving me to a different area, then I end up getting, I end up meeting up with my ex. Worst, to her worst time of my life, mate. I'll say to you, she, st got, she stabbed me. It's a girl from Roncorn. A girl from Roncorn? Yeah, that's why when you, you told me that. Why? <laughs> Run away, you told me that. A wild northerner. Wild's not the word, bro. She, she sucked my soul. She sucked my soul. How, how did you meet her in the first place, a Ronconian? Isn't it? Good question, isn't it? So I'll tell you how I met her. So I met her. Um, I see her brothers. Sorry. I see her um her brothers, her brother and um her brother and her um, partner on 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 the train. And the partner, for some reason, she was trying to intimidate me. She had the like she had she had keys, but she tried to put her key in between there and give me that. What's she on about? Like, what's she playing at? So you're right there. Are you all right? <laughs> Don't tell me I'm right, but guess who she with? She's with this sexy, sexy rom-com girl. So this girl's come over with her scouts house and oh, don't worry, lad. Don't worry, lad. I'm like, raw. Like, you sound all right, you know? She so had all right. She had a back as well. And I'm like, raw, you look all right. I said, you know what? I'll turn a blind eye to it. But guess what? He was living with me at that time. My little brother. So me and my bro is staying together. So I've gone somewhere else, gone and do my thing, come back that night. Say, how you do? How's your day? Be, I'm all right, you know, bro. But guess what? You know, you've been off for a couple of nights. What? Guess what? I met, I, I met a bird, you know. I said, who? Who's the girl? He described her to me. I said, no. I said, 
Now, what's the odds of that? I said, what? Where do you know where they live? So yeah, come, let's go to their house. I took me to their house. I said, fucking hell, is that you? I said, yeah, and then me and I just ended up clicking straight away for the wrong reasons. She, stuck, she got me into so many dramas, man. She got me into, she used to love fighting. She got into love fighting. Have you got any stories of that? Yeah. Go for but, it. Boom. She got me into a madness where, I'll tell you when she got me, she put me in jail. By the way, she got me recalled. Give us that one as well. Shall I give you that one? Shall yeah, I give you yeah. that first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Boom. When she put me in jail, yeah, it was me, my cousin, and her. We are at my house. We're chilling. We're chilling. We've got a bit of MD in a, a couple of stuff. In, stuff a couple of gear with us, stuff like that. But her brother wanted something, innit? Guess where her brother lived? Oh my god, F Farnham. What's the odds <laughs> of that? All the shot. We had to go all the shot. That's where I got end up getting rich. Watch this now, yeah. She ended up living in and her brother lives in Farnham. So we got into all, but this is on a, on a bank holiday carnival weekend. I remember it vividly, it was around August times. So bam, we had to go to see the brother and that, and the trains were moving a bit slow and stuff like that. Boom, we went to go see her brother. But on the way, on the way there, she loved to fight. Out, there'll be a sexy bird, yeah, across the world, yeah, or a nice looking bird across the road. I even, even saw the bird. She told me, what the fuck are you looking at that dog for? I'm like, what are you on about? Her, I said, I didn't even see her. What are you know? She was so insecure in it. So I'm like, what are you on about? Anyway, let's go back to the um, the thing. We got to the store now. As we got to the store, she loves to fight and stuff like that. So I'm inside the store. As I'm inside the store, I'm getting a few drinks and stuff for us. As I'm getting some drinks, I can hear, ah, ah, outside. I think what's going on out there? She's like, grabbing one girl's hair, like, ah, they're having it out. Some some chubby, some big bird in it. Some big bird, <laughs> big boned bird. She's getting the better for her. She's tucking my girl in, isn't it? But guess what? The bird, she's with five travellers. And it's only me and my cousin. So these travellers said, instead of trying to break it up, these guys are trying to come fight us. So now we've backed out our belts. So have you gotten our belts? Boom. Start waving and waving out. They got me, one of them, two of them got me on the floor. They're kicking me up, kicking me up, kicking me up, kicking me up. Woo, woo, woo. This is outside, older shop. Just opposite, there's a lot of off-license, 24-hour shop. Opposite, there's a little lot of off-license there. Bam. The police end up pulling up, pulling up. Boom. Arrested my cousin. He got de-arrested when my bird came with a bus slip and said, look, look, they're tat toss like, all right, cool, you guys go. Then she looked at us and like, how come you guys ain't got no bruises or scars? I said, didn't you see me? I was getting my head kicked in. I was on the floor, mate. There was like two of them on me. She's pissed off, she's pissed off, she's pissed off because she's the only one who's got a fat lip now, but she's the one who started the trouble, bro. Like, it's not my fault, innit? Like, what's she playing at, innit? Now we've gone, now we're all pissed, pissed head. But now we've got carnival the next morning. So I've got carnival in the morning, so I'm sleeping, the brother's there, we're chilling with the brother, the housemate's there, chilling, I'm sleeping, 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 sleeping. I can see it's around, I can see the sun coming up, it's around 4 a.m. I can see the sun coming up, 3 a.m. I can see her in the garden still laughing. Ah, 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 ah. Come, get up. Ah, oh, shit. And anyway, yeah. And he said, yo, come, get to bed. Don't fucking tell me what to do in my brother's house. Paul! Paul! I'm going to say her name, his name is Paul, innit? Paul! Paul, actually, his name's Gary. Gary! Gary! Get down here! Gary's come running downstairs with a fat flatmate now. Do -do 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 -do. What the fuck? You can't put your hands on my sister. As soon as he's running towards me, as he's running towards me, but he don't know my cousin's got a dirty right on him. Licked him straight away. Bow! I'm on his bum straight away. Now me and the housemates having a flat and they're having a fight now. We're scuffling out, scuffling out, scuffling out, scuffling out, scuffling out. Whilst that is happening, guess what this bird's doing? Calling the police on me. Mm. The police has come now. As the police come, what ends up happening? She, the lip that she had, that was boss, she said, he hit me. Oh. My heart broke. And guess why? Because I was on license as well. Oh. And she knew I'm going to get recalled for this. Oh. He hit me. I'm like, why? Why? I, was, I thought I was in love with her. I was oh, lust. Wow. She hit me. He hit me. Well, I swear to God. Yeah. And I, I went to prison now. So me and my cousin, we've got, we've gone to the, uh, we went to Red Hill Magistrates. Is Red Hill around here? Yeah. Yeah, Red Hill. We went to Red Hill Magistrates. As we went to Red Hill Mag Magistrates, we're like, oh, um, then they reminded me. So man, there, I remember I got reminded in high down, HMP high down. I'm lying down. I'm, at, I'm just lying down. I wake up the next morning. I look up. I'm thinking, I see the door. I said, brother, you're in jail right now. I got my cousin down uh, below me. I said, bro. I swear they were meant to be your people. How are they put in your jail? I said, you know what? I don't know what's going on. I come out of the cell straight away. Soon as I come out, I find out who's got a phone. Got on the blower straight away. 
rang his her mum. I said, she got me in here, you know. For what? Rang the brother up, the other brother. They mean him a good pals. I said, shut up. She didn't put you in jail. Brother, I'm sitting in jail right now. I said, shut the fuck up. So bam, now I've gone to the probation officer. The probation officer is looking at me. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lady as well. She's some beautiful, beautiful lady as well. She's saying to me, so you like to hate women? What? You love to hit women? I'm like, nah. Well, that's what it says on the paper. What are you gonna say? What what leg do you have to stand on right now? I ain't got a leg to stand on. Guess what I end up doing? I end up going to court three months later, case end up getting thrown out. As soon as the case gets thrown out, they hold me for another seven months because I'm 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 a licensed free court. So I've done start, I've done ten months for no reason. Where were you during that seven months? Huh? Where were you being held for that seven months? In Hyde, HMP High Down. What happened in there? A few things. I remember the first day we came on the wing, me and my cousin, we first came on the, the first day we came on the wing. Obviously, we didn't have no canteen and stuff like that. It was canteen day, so survival of the fittest, man. We looked for some canteen, got some canteen together. But I remember, man, I got into some, I got into some pasta, man, but I had to bite my tongue on this one because imagine I went for my parole board meeting today and the decision is going to get made in the next 48 hours. And I must have got a bit, I, I got into a little altercation with one guy. It was from Essex. We got into Essex and we got an altercation anyway. We had a scrap. What was the altercation over? It was over weed, man. The money didn't go in. I got a gram of weed. I asked for a gram of weed. The money didn't go into his account. We ended up scuffing. He got the better of me. He, he got the better of me anyway. I was, I'm re, I would have retaliated in a way because but I knew in the back of my mind, if you retaliate right now, bro, you're going up for parole right now. I didn't even mention this story before. You're going up to for parole right now, so you need to bite your tongue. So I bit my tongue, took that, took that on the chin. He come back to me. He said, the money's in there. I told you. I said, it took long. And then next day, next 48 hours, I went home. Wow. So if I did something, maybe I would have stayed in jail. Maybe I wouldn't, but I couldn't risk it. I just took that, put my head down. You win some, you lose some, innit? You know what I mean? So, What was it like getting released that time? Did you stay away from Roncon checks? Brother, she tagged us what ended up happening to her, though. What? She dead, she's, she, she's on smack now. Oh, man. So I think that was a saying. I think something was saving me from her. Yeah. God was saving me from it, bro. Some people are just on a self-destruct spiral of, of death, aren't they? Yeah, and I found out she's just somewhere up north. She's on, she's on the thing. Then guess what she said? She ended up seeing the story on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Did she give it a like? No, she tagged she tag worm her way back in. I said, oh, on your bike, yeah? <laughs> oh, you know I still love you, you no. Know? Baba. She calls me Baba. I said, don't call me Baba. <laughs> She's probably gonna wa be watching this. Yeah, the highs. Hi. I'm I made it, girl. I told you. Ooh. Got you. I did. <laughs> <laughs> all right so as you get to like 23 24 what's happening around that age so 23 24 what's happening now everyone's just sort of disowned me bro so as they disowned me they're like oh um my mom's kicked me out of that gaff obviously my mom kicked me out at all like everyone's just left me to do me and i was so confused because i, I don't know like because i've gave so much out i felt i expected something back from people and then when I didn't get nothing back from them, I'm thinking, I was just empty inside. I said, I, just, I, did, I was giving all this love out and I can't even get at least 10% back. I'm thinking, this is mad. Then I, unfortunately, I lost my best friend in prison. As I lost my best friend in prison, then my brother got into some mad altercation. You lost your best friend in prison? What, what happened to him? It's my best, he died in his sleep, allegedly. Do you think he was set up? I think the govs are, the govs, for some reason, the cameras on the wing was not on that day. Oh, that's what they did to Epstein. It's common, isn't it? That's the, you know, the cameras just don't go on. Now, all of a sudden, that day was not on. Yeah, yeah. You what? He died in his sleep. How? How? What do you mean? But he made enemies with the guards and the admin. He was only in jail for two weeks. On what charges was that? Oh, it was a recall, license recall. Oh. And guess what? That's why it touched me and what made me want to reflect and change my life around yeah. is because I was with him for the last two weeks before he went jail. Was you? And we was not together for the, like for three years. And he was staying over my gaff. 
And what was his health like? Healthy, six foot two, dark, handsome, yeah. strong, built like an ox. He's been, he's been, he's been, in, he's been in car crashes. He's been stabbed up. He's God knows, God knows, he's been through so much. But then end up telling me he end up dying in his sleep. Did they say what killed him in his sleep? They said something about he had drugs in his system. So what are you talking about? I don't get that. That don't make no sense. It don't add up to the person who you t who you're talking about. Yeah. I'm still looking into that though. I'm definitely looking into that. Once I get myself in a position where I, my voice can be heard, I'm gonna bring it up. If if I get there, will power to do that. So when was the prison fight? The Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. Oh, that was in this. That was in HMP ISIS. ISIS. HMP ISIS guys. Okay. And so yeah, bam. That one happened because I was in HMP ISIS from, let's say, I got shipped out when I, you know, when I got shipped out from that prison where the five tuners and stuff. Yeah. And the big fella, Debo and stuff like that. I came from that jail. Mm. You understand? As I came from that jail, I've gone to this YOY. I don't know what made me want to go to this YOY, but that was one of the biggest mistakes that I did. I went there because all the kids got something to prove. I was better off in that adult jail. You know what I mean? I had nothing to prove in there. So anyway, I got to that jail now. I was there, I was cool, 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 cool. I was all right. I was one, there was not a lot of Somalians on the, in, in that jail at the time. There was one good brother from South London. He used to look out for me as well. Good guy, gave me an But then it ended up coming to the end of my sentence. But then I heard there was a lot of altercations happening on the other side of the jail. And there was a lot of youngsters, younger Somalian fellas that, um, that were new to, who was really passive. But they're, they're big men right now. They do a lot of things. They're, they're great guys. But they were passive and they were not new to this. They were new to the surroundings, to their environment. And I'm hearing that they're getting, they're getting like, mistreated over there in a way. Like, and I'm not no big hench guy, but I don't like that in it. So you know what? My last three, four weeks, yeah. Actually, my last three, two months, I'm going to go over to that wing and see what's going on. Because I know a couple of guys who, that, who are on that wing. <clears throat> so what ends up happening... I'm on this wing, so I'm on house block, I'm on F wing and they're on E wing. And E wing and F wing, you can shout through the windows. So as I'm hearing, one of, this, one of my mates here, um, Sam's here, he hollers at me, he says, yo, listen, in Somali, speaking to me, Somali, listen, it's going to be a madness in the morning. Come out and exercise. I said, like, what? Turn it down. Then my pal, next, uh, an, an African in, 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 in Congo from Africa, yeah? From West Africa, yeah? He's like, good what is he saying to you, bro? Like, do 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 do. You know he's in the wrong, innit? Like, you know man's gonna smack him up. I'm like, bro, you can't smack him up, bro. Like, that's man's people, innit? Like, don't do that, innit? And then it's like, oh, all right, cool. We got out in the morning. As we got out in the morning, there was maybe only like seven, eight of us. There were like 15 of them, 14 of them. I'm telling them, yo, what's going on? What's going on? And then they're saying to me, bro, bro, bro. So we hyping up, hyping up, hyping up. Then, then I heard one of them say, let's just wait for him until we get back on the wing. We're gonna deal with him back on the wing. So when I heard that, I was like, you know, it's now or never, bro. And in Somalia, I'm saying to you, you know, strike him. In Somalia, I'm saying, you know, hit him, set it, set it, set it, set it. She striked him and that's where he kicked off. He started scuffling, scuffling, scuffling. And we got the better of them. Because we, I realised in life, yeah, when you're not in the wrong, you're always going to be strong. But when you're wrong, you can't be strong. That's how life goes. That's why I clocked on. Every L that I took is when I did something wrong. If that makes any sense. If, if it's <clears> the truth... You've got your heart and soul in it, backing you up, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. People are fighting for lies. Lies. Not know that there's nothing behind you, it. Yeah. and There's no true meaning. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. bro. That's exactly what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. So what happened when the officers and inmates plotted on a friend? What do you want to go on? Plotted on a friend? Yeah, plotted on a friend of yours. The officers and the inmates plotted on a friend of yours. That was one of your video titles, something like that. Come on, man, see that? I don't yeah. know. I need to see it, man. I don't, I've, got, I've, got, I've got like 100 videos up there, you know? I know. Uh, All right, let's go with Almost Stabbed in Prison. Ooh! <laughs> Brother, I ain't gonna I, I'm not going to forget about this one. Um, so basically, I was on HMP ISIS. This is before I got onto the end, onto F-Wing. On that side, I was on A-Wing. <coughs> so as I'm on A-Wing, I saw my blower. Maybe there's only two people in the whole wing that had a blower. I was one of them. Because <clears throat> I met a really good guy, Peter, Peter, man. Lucky, that's my brother. He got 23 years, I heard. 
It's my really good guy. He look, he, like, he's a real guy in it. So big up Peter. The next time I Peter is there anyway. We used to get we used to get we used to get our parcels in, innit? Because we're getting our parcels, we're getting our gear in, we're getting our phones in. Do you know what I mean? But this guy now, <clears throat> there's a couple of Afghani brothers there. And they had a DVD player. And the DVD player had a he had a USB thing in it. And it has a USB thing. This is where we used to charge up our things with it, innit? So I'm like, I said, yo, let me borrow your DVD player. Bam, I'm borrowing his DVD player using the thing. I used to look him after him, give him a few things. Da -da. Then bam, one day the, the officer coming to my cell, check my prop card, checked it out. You don't have that on your prop list. Took it from me. I'm telling him, I'm telling the fella, oh, listen, the officers took my, um, the DVD player. It was out of my will. Oh, you owe us, you owe us money. I'm like, Bro, all right, cool, I'm going to pay you. But I kept longing it off. I was in the wrong in the way. I was, kept longing it off, longing it off, longing it off. Then one day, I'm just there sweeping my cell. <laughs> I've got a music blast. I'm listening to Drake's new album. <laughs> I'm just, boom, I'm just sweet. I'm just cleaning myself. Boom, boom, boom. I didn't even clock that it opened the door for souls, you know. That's how I was in my own little zone. Do, do, do. The, the, the bass was playing it high. I just think, boom. And then, then, then I heard the thing just slam behind me. I looked back. My man. I turned it down. You're right there. Backed it out straight away on me. The knife. He looked at me. Where's my money? I'm like, Salam alaikum, brother. How are you, brother? First of all, what are you playing at? We don't condone in violence. We can talk about this, you know. No need to bring that knife out right now. It's all right, cool. Listen, I've got you. Don't worry. Why you come to me, bruv? I've got you, you know. I will my way out of it. Anyway, got myself out of the cell, luckily. Cause he gave me had a thing in there. I was like, cool, say no more. I said, say no more. He got out of the cell, say no more. I said, safe. One second. Came back. Boom, 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 boom. It was him, it was two of them, innit? There was two of them that came into my cell, innit? So then and then then, then they came out of my cell. Then I was like, you know what? I felt violated. I went down there. I said, you know, are you I just got violated, bruv? I said, what happened? I man just had back out the thing on me, you know. I'm like, what? Swear down. See my brethren Shams, big up, that's another warrior man, he's a warrior man. But these times I'm saying Shams, <laughs> this whistle, <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come, we're going to crack this guy up. He ended up getting two scars here, you know, from that same thing. Imagine, he's such a G, you know, that's my brother, you know, actually, man. But these times now, but see the one who came out there now, I cracked him up. I got him on the landing, crock, 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 grabbed, grabbed a couple of snooker balls, launched them at him, clonk, 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 got him up. Spoke to the survey guys, told him how they're looking. He said, yo, you fucked them up. I said, yes, good. They look good on them. And guess what? I'm in the middle of nowhere. Two years ago, I'm in Slough. Do you know where Slough is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm in yeah. Slough, minding my own business as usual. <sighs> Going to this pizza shop. Who owns the pizza shop? The fella. He looked at me, good lad. <laughs> As we do this, this is my pizza shop, welcome. <laughs> I'm like, no way. He said, do you want a free pizza? I said, come. He gave me a hug. I said, yo, we was kids back then, man. This was like 10 years ago. I said, yeah, this was kids back then, man. Don't know. And we hugged it out and then we left it as that, mate. Sweet. What was the closest you ever came to being killed? The closest that I end up came, what, in prison? Uh, anywhere. In, in my life? Yeah. When I got, when I caught tuberculosis, man. Ooh. TB man, that was not a nice time of my life. How did you get that? I was homeless, innit? it? Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, what year? Well, how old were you when you got this? I was a big man, you know. I'm, like, I was like 25, 26. 25, 26. Twenty-five, twenty-six. Years homeless back, at that I was point. Homeless, yeah. Where, whereabouts were you living on the streets Manch of Manchester? Oh, Manchester. Yeah, you got the TB. Yeah, I, I went there to go see family and stuff. But yeah, obviously, family is not what it seems, innit? it? That's why you got loyalty is family, in it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So. I expected something from them, but I didn't receive. I ended up becoming homeless. At first, I was working. I was working at Heathrow, uh, not Heathrow, Manchester Airport. I was doing Amazon. <laughs> Top sell, banging out, banging out, banging out. I would end up being an instructor there. I didn't tell them about my disclosure, about my, give me my bat and my criminal record. Come back, slay me in the office, said to me, you have to call me. I said, why? It's come back. I'm like, shit, gone back to my family. Mentioned it to them. They said to me, oh, um, I told them I lost my job. And then unfortunately, they said a few things that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And then I was just there by myself, slept on the streets for like two weeks. And then caught tobacco. I didn't know I caught TV at this time. 
I went back to London. How do you even catch that shit? Do you know? I don't know how you catch that shit. It's just so, I don't know how you catch that stuff. And then end up catching that. Then as that happened, um, um, I went to the council. They said, you're not a priority. At this time, I didn't know I had it. And then it was a blessing. It was a blessing and a curse as well. Because great people, I met great people after this. Then I caught the TV. As I caught the TV, I'm like, um, I ain't got nothing. No, no. As I've gone to the council, they say, you're not a priority. Then I'm there. I'm, I'm homeless again in London. So I'm sleeping in the mosque. Mind in the moment, trying to sleep in a mosque, trying to build myself up. And my mom, don't get me wrong, my mom was there, but me and my mom had a hate and love relationship. We didn't understand each other. The communication was, wasn't there. We were like, we were like two peas in a pod, so I couldn't even come around there. She couldn't come around me. But then I went to the GP. I just got a checkup, gave me blood tests and stuff like that. It came, the results came back. They said, you got TB. And then I went back to the council, became a priority. They could put a roof over my head. And from there, things just started become, my life started becoming blessed. Did the TB kick in then? Did you have like symptoms? Yeah. And I, <clears throat> I lost a lot of weight. That's why I lost a lot of weight. I didn't know why I was losing weight, but I lost so much weight. And then <clears throat> I end up thingy. One second. So like I said earlier, all Guled's links are in the description box. If you want to subscribe to his channel. Over 20k subs in a record amount of time. It's going really fast. Thank you. But yeah. <clears throat> no, I didn't have the symptoms, but they were giving me like 15 pills a day to eat. Jeez. And guess what they're telling me to do? They gave me a phone so I, they, they can see me swallowing the pills. Wow. But then I started putting my weight back up. Then I met this amazing woman called Helen. God, rest, uh, God bless her soul. Not from Roncorn. No. Not from Roncorn. She was actually from, where is she from? She's from somewhere in London. She's got amazing. She's got one son, Irish lady, amazing woman. She she was my nurse, my TV nurse. She used to help me out. She used to go to the and shopping store for me. She used to give me extra a little vouchers for my shopping and stuff like that. It's go beyond for me in it. So it felt good. And from there, eventually I started getting better. And then my life started to come in. Yeah, man, I started just focusing more, man. And yeah, I found my purpose. My purpose is, is to inspire people. Like, Jeremy, you know I mean? for the things that I've been through in life and hopefully they can learn from that and avoid what I did wrong. We're going to get to more of that uh, shortly. What happened when the cops kicked your ass? The feds kicked my ass? Yeah. What, 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 what was this in jail or in, on road? Um, The police kicked my ass. That was another one of your videos. Can't remember which, whether it was inside or outside. No, this is in Somalia, though. Right? That's in Somalia. Okay, let's go with that. Yeah, that's in Somalia. What year? So, this is when I, I when I got that robbery case. Yeah. In, 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 when I got the six stone two, I know, and I got, um, um, when I flew out to Somalia, I was out there for like six, seven months, and I was like 15. So right. So this is 2006, I think. I we, do we, believe so. We've not done any Somalia stories, Woo! so let's, let's do this one. Should we do that? So we yeah. do the first, the first time. Should we do the first time I got robbed in Somalia? Yes. That one, yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, the first time I went to Somali, Somali land, hey, gay saw, I went there. Obviously, I ran away from that case, from that robbery case. So I've gone there now. As I've gone there, I went to go see my dad's brother, my uncle. As I've gone to see my uncle, at this time, my dad's not even passed away. Do you know what I mean? So, I went to go see my dad before I left. I mentioned to my dad, you know what, I'm going to Somalia. So, you know what, I don't want you to go to Somalia. I would rather you, you, you gather your education now so later on in life you don't need to ask no one for nothing. But if you want to go to Somalia, then go do what you have to do. I went there now. Fast forward. See my uncle. I told my uncle, my uncle, I had a big afro. My uncle, my uncle was saying, you're going to stick out like a soul farm out here, mate. They're going to know you where you're from. What you need to do is just get a number one. I said, like, are you sure, uncle? Said, yeah. I said, like, all right, cool, uncle. So where do I go? So what you need to do is you go straight down that road, walk straight down, do that right, do that right, do that, right, and you'll see a couple of barbers there. Cool. Went to the barber. <laughs> they give me a number one, like I was in the army, straight away. Boom. As I've gone now, I heard that there was a restaurant called the London Restaurant. It's not there no more, but it was a little place where people from Canada, Australia, America come together. We play pool, listen to some vibes. I just feel like, you know what I mean? We're back home in it, in a way, in it. Like, because really and truly, England is our home, in it, because we grew up here all our life, in it. So this is all we know. So anyway, I've gone there now, but I knew one of my mates were there. 
So as I knew one of my mates were there, I'm like, oh, um, um, and then I was like, I'm looking for this guy. So I've gone to this spot. I'm like, yo, you guys, shh, have you seen so and so? Oh, he just left like, a few minutes ago. They've never met him in their life. Oh, he's the mess. Where are you from? You guys, I'm from Canada. I'm from Holland. I'm from Belgium. Oh, where are you from? I'm from Denmark. I'm from Sweden, Norway. Cool. Wow, I'm from England. So I felt like I was a part of the gang. But all this time, they were from they were from Somali. They never left. They've done it. They've done it. They, 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 they put the wool over my eyes. So I'm thinking, raw. <laughs> but then I ended up finding out afterwards. So they said, what? I said, yo. I said, yo, man, we got some chicks for you. We're going to vibe. I said, remember, I started smoking weed when I was 12. So I'm saying, what? Can I get some loud? But we've got that on deck. We want some girls who've got that on deck. I said, come, let's roll. I'm a part of the crew. So I'm rolling, 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 rolling. As I'm walking, walking with them. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just going with them. I don't know. I'm going to a death trap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to a death trap. <laughs> Literally. So I'm thinking, <laughs> so I'm rolling. So they got me in the middle of nowhere where there's no lights, yeah, at all. They got no lights at all. So I'm there in the middle of nowhere, pal. And I'm like to him, oh, um, so where are we going from here? One of them grabbed me from the back of my shoe, right here. And it's called Sabahad. It's called Sabahad. Sabahad means um, judo in English. So they're really 10-10 with their judo. Swept me, flipped, bow, landed on my ass. Huh. They just stripped me butt naked. Oh. I had my winky, I had my uh, willy out, everything. They took everything out of me. They humiliated me. But then I started, I got, they, 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 they took my, I, I said, please just give me my house keys. Just give me a house key, take everything. I had like maybe 10 pounds on me, but that's a lot of money back then, innit? And I had 10 pounds. I remember I had a packet of sovereign cigarettes back then. Remember them small packets that used to be £2.10p ten p, and you buy it from the shops. I remember I had that. I had two cigarettes left in there. They took that as well. They took the tenner. I've left now. They've left now. I'm running. Got to the store. Some random lady and uh, some man or lady and I uh, was at the store and say, listen, I've just been attacked and I need help. And do you know my uncle? Who is he? All right, cool. Can you direct me where I have to go then? I, I live next to that place. Went to my uncle's house. I went to my uncle's house. He said, how's, how's your evening, sir? Nothing. I'm all right. I got my hair cut done. Went to bed. I don't like to tell. You get me? I like, will probably going to get in trouble. But guess what? What tops you off on top of that? Six months later, I get invited to a wedding. A little gathering. Gone to the gathering. Guess who I saw? One of the fellas that robbed me. I've gone to my cousin now. Ran to his Remember, I told you I got robbed. He said, yeah. One of them guys are here right now. Show me. Him. That's my little cousin. I said, come with over. So that's thing is that, and son. So what, he's my family member then. I said, no, you're having a laugh. He's come over. You remember what you did to me that day? He started crying. No, I didn't even know you was family. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> His, his older cousin started slapping him. How mm. dare you do that to me? Ah! I just, mm. you know, I forgive you, man. Safe, no problem. And yeah, that's when I got robbed in Somalia. And then after that, what ended up happening? Boom. When the police effed me up, my, my uncle got them back for me because he was a judge at that time. And he saw this judge. So he's like, I've gone to this weed spot. As you go into this weed spot, in this weed spot, back then, not now, it used to be old ladies that used to sell the weed you know you you got little kids selling because I'm a big woman selling I'm like right, you're holding the pack I can't believe it she brought that boom she, got, she gave me what I had to and she gave me what I had to get and then and then bam I've gone down the stairs as I've gone down the stairs of some building as I've gone down the stairs as I've gone down the stairs guess who's waiting for me outside two offices <laughs> ah I'm thinking no bro I've looked at <laughs> acting like I didn't see them come here you little shit I'm like, what's up? Where are you from? I should have told them that I was actually from Hegesa H-Town. I told them my, my birth where I was born in Djibouti. And guess what? They don't like people from Djibouti. And I end up finding out later on. I said, what? Where are you from? Repeat that. He pulled out his stick. Bat! It's, a walk it's like a walking stick. Bat! I remember he licked me there, little shit, man. Bat! Licked me, licked me, licked me. I'm running. Sweat, he kicked my legs together. I dropped, I landed on my toe. My toe got bent like that. Oh. I remember I was running up. Ah, ah. 
I got onto the thing, then I went to my uncle's garage, my uncle from my mum's side, a garage and stuff. And then the man they was picking me up like that, to pick me up, took me into the um, hospital. They cracked it back in place for me. Um, I told my, yeah, they cracked it clap, clap, on the spot. No Ooh. injection, nothing. Look that way. Bah, bah. I'm like, whoa, that was a mad one. So as that happened now, um, what ends up happening after that, um, I told my uncle, the judge, the uncle, I got violated. What happened to your foot? I'm trying to be honest with you. All right, this is what happened like that. This is what happened. Cool. All right, then. What police station? Go, go to the local police station. Do you know how they look like? I, said, I remember exactly how they look like. So I said, cool, I'm going to go to the main police station. Went to the police station. He saw that the guy ended up being a sergeant. My uncle kicked the sergeant's ass on the spot. Kicked him up. Bah, 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 bah. Slapped him up, slapped him up, slapped him up. How dare you? Da, 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 da. And then and that's what, that's what it was. Wow. What a story. That's what it's like. Wow. And I went to, there was another story when I was in Dubai. Oh, do you want to hear that one? Yeah, of course. All right, cool, watch. <laughs> How old were you when you went to Dubai? This is when, this is the second time I went to Somalia. I was literally, this is before I went into Rochester. So I was thinking I was 18, 19. No, no, actually 20. Tell a lie, because I ran away from that case for that bookies. And that, that's the case that I ran away from again. I don't know why I keep running from cases. You end up going to bite you in a bum later on. So just, you need to just deal with it. Bam, I end up going to Dubai. I had a lot of, I had a lot of cash on me anyway, because I'd done that bookies anyway. I had some peas on me. I had a few quid on me. So I went to Dubai. As I went to Dubai, as a me, I'm a people's person. So I met a couple of guys, met one guy from, two guys from Canada, one from Toronto, the other guy from Ottawa. Not that story again. Huh? What are they pretending? Which one? <laughs> Remember? They said, I'm from Canada. I'm from Norway. No, 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 no. These guys, no, no, these guys are actually the real deal. <laughs> no, they were the, <laughs> no, they were, no, they were literally the, they were the real deal. Literally. So, bam. so I'm like, what up, dog? Is it what up, homie? But these guys, guess what? I'm a madman. I was in Dubai. I took a half ounce of weed with me. Death penalty, isn't it? I, swear, I didn't even know this. Oh, I swear, I don't even know this. I'm so lucky. Yeah. I'm so lucky. You got guys doing like five years for seeds on the shoes. P weed seeds were found on a shoe. And I had a half ounce of cheese. Back then, we used to have cheese. We blue cheese. If you guys remember, there used to be blue cheese. I had a half ounce. And I guess what? I didn't even plug it. I had it only cheeks. Mad, you know. Watch this anyway. I'm there. I'm seeing these guys. Yo, what up, dog? Da -da 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 -da. Yo, what up, homies? I had a, a nice little bit of cash on me. And I'm a generous person if I've got something. You know, I always give back, in it. These times now, I'm like, you guys, don't worry, I got you guys, let's go. Going out for a meal now. Tell me, guys, take me to the little spot. What are we going to take you to? A nice spot. So, but I said, I want to buy some clothes first, innit? Bought some clothes and that. Boom, 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 boom. I was good. They say, we're going to go to this spot. As I went into, into this spot now, <sighs> beautiful girls in there. Wow. I saw one specifically. She was wearing a purple dress and she had a body of a lion. She was built like a beast. I'm like, raw. I'm like, raw. See that one there? That one there? You need to take that one home with you somehow. I was like, I called the waiter over. I'm like, Shh, come, come, come. He said, what? See that one in the purple child? Can you take her fan off of me with ice? I just take it over and then she took it. I said, where's this come from? And she said, from him. And pointing towards my man. I'm like, and she gave me the biggest smile ever. I'm like, you're in there, son. Get in there. I'm like, yes, boy. I said, like, whoa, watch out. Catch out. So I'm there. I'm like, what? I'm there now. As I'm there, I've gone over now. Obviously, she's drinking a drink. I've gone over now. I said, what are you saying? I sat next to her. I said, how are you doing? She's smiling still. I'm saying, right there. She's speaking some broken English and that. She was from she was from East Africa. Beautiful girl, bro. Beautiful girl. Give me, she was from Ethiopia. I said, what's going on? I said, what are you saying? What are you up to for the reason in the evening? She's like, nothing much. She's like, do you want to come back to mine? So you, you lot, I'm gone. I'm left with her. Let's go. Let's go. I'm jumped in the cab now. I'm in the cab with her. I'm just looking at her. She's just sitting down thinking, bro, these things look dangerous. Fast forward now, got to the gaff. As I got to this gaff, I was only young. I clocked on, but I was smart still. Got to the gaff now. Had a few drinks. Do you know what I mean? So I'm just a bit bubbly, buzzing and stuff. Get me a bit chuffed and that. Boom. Got onto the thing. Um... Um, what's gonna say? Got to the and got to the gaff, but as I got into the gaff, I, I went into the room. But as I went into the room, there was like four different beds in place there. So I'm thinking, uh oh, what's going on here, brother? <laughs> this girl don't live alone. 
And then we went in there, then I see a couple, two other girls. Then I'm trying to do the maths. I'm thinking, nah, do you reckon it is? Then I went into the room and she's like, oh, she's like, can you give me a bit of money? What are you? Yo, I escort. I said, no. And I'm already there, I'm already in my cab, I'm already busted. I'm thinking, you know what, I'm, I need to do this girl in today, mate. I'm, I'm not having it, bruv. I need to do it, bruv. Like, How much do you want? She's like, 20 quid, you deserve 30. Here you go. You deserve 30, so I give her the 30 quid. But what ended up happening? I don't know what. Well, anyway, things led to another, I don't know, we've done what we had to do. I left my jeans on the floor. As I left my jeans on the floor, I had like $400 in my jeans on the side. But now I put my jeans back on. Four hundred dollars gone. Oh. Ow! I'm thinking. Oh. You know I don't like taking L's. You know I don't like taking. L's. I was thinking. Oh, bro, you just been stung. How? So I'm like, ah, you lot are taking that piss. Some big Nigerian African guy, big guy. He's like, what are you talking about? Stop making noise in here. I said, what? Listen, I'm not leaving this place until I've got my money. I'm giving it to John, Jimmy Big Bollix, yeah? And I'm like, he just went like that, cracked me right in my throat. <coughs> Punched me right in my throat like that. Pow, I remember hard. It humbled me straight away. I thought, yo, humble yourself. You're in the middle of nowhere, chill. The landlord comes now. Guess what the landlord starts doing? He starts kicking my ass as well. So now he's slapping me, slapping me, slapping me. I'm only 19. Slapping me up, slapping me up, slapping me up. I'm like, cool, cool, cool. I'm like, oh, cool, cool. I'm like, nah, man, you guys robbed me. I've looked over there. I found, I found a little $200 squatted because they see me making a big scene out of this. I picked up the $200. There was another two, maybe another $200 missing. And I'm like, cool. I took that L. But now the landlord's saying to me, I'm escorting you out of the building. I'm like, cool. No problem. I remember living in the flat, I said, no problem, I'm walking, <laughs> I'm feeling like I'm wounded. I'm, I've gone into the lift with him now. <laughs> Soon as he pressed G and them doors closed, I gave him the biggest right hook ever. Hooked him straight away, bow! He didn't see it coming. Licked him up, bow, 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 bow. Door open, boom! <laughs> gone, hostile! <Hot seal. laughs> Jumped in my cab, gone! Went back to the hotel. Who's there chilling? The Canadian boys are chilling on the bed like that. That's you lot! I got fucked. I told you, dog. Where did you leave with them? This is fucked up out here. Then I got fucked up on another night. But yeah, I got bad stories, man. What happened on the other night? The other night was was fucked up, man. It was the same spot. I've gone back to it, but now in Dubai at them times there. Now it's alright, but them times there, a few Nigerian guys used to sell alcohol in their basements down the below, and they used to be because you get seen with alcohol, you get your life turned over over there. I don't. I think it's different now, but back then it was a lot, lot more stricter. Anyway, as that's happened now, we've got a couple of champagne bottles. As I've got a couple of champagne bottles with vibes, vibes, vibes in. I'm just there. I'm at Jamira Beach. I've got my remember. I've got my weed in it, so I'm smoking there. In my boxes. Got my watch on. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm that guy. Boom, chilling. I'm that guy. You get me? Catch me if you can, fuckers. Remember, I'm wanting it. Catch me if you can, motherfuckers. So I'm like, yeah, cool with it. So I'm just there. So I'm just there, yeah. And in the middle of the sea, yeah. So this I'm now. And um, we've gone now. We've gone back to that spot now. I'm a bit tipsy. I'm drunk now. But I've come out of the place like an idiot. I'm in a nice facility and surroundings where they have toilets. But I've gone outside to use the phone. But then I said to myself, oh, yeah, I need a wee. I need to go piss over there quickly. I started taking a leak over there. As I'm taking a leak, I got my finger out, taking a leak, taking a leak, taking a leak. There's a big van there in front of me, man. And he's flashing me, he's flashing like that. So I've gone like that. Put the middle finger up, fuck you, you cunt, type of thing. The guy's come out of the van. I saw him, that's the last thing I saw. Next thing I was in the... <laughs> I'm in the ambulance. I don't know what happened to me. I heard I got suplexed. Cause I was tipsy in it. I was, I was, I was not in the right state of mind. He picked me up. I this, he lagged me down like that. Boom. And I was all right though. Then my uncle, one of my uncles from Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, he he lived there. He had to drive all the way down. He heard what happened. I was in hospital. They were so worried. He said, "You need to get you out of here. We need to take you to Somalia." And then I just got my ticket. I went to Somalia. And then yeah. Holy shit, man! Wow. Right, we've got fifteen minutes left. What stories do you want to finish on? Fifteen. Yeah. I want to I want to finish on on what I'm doing now. Yeah, let's go. That's for more it. important. 
What made you change your mind from the lifestyle? I knew I deserved better in life. I knew my worth. I was sleeping on my own potential. I knew that I was gifted with something, but I just needed to use my gift and get put in the right direction. It was hard because everyone around me was on the streets. I didn't have no friends that pay taxes. You understand? So I had to seclude myself and become a loner. You know, and like when I became a loner, it got scary. It was nice. You get me? Like everyone's out on New Year's Eve. I'm at home minding my own business. What year was this and where were you living? Currently, at this time, this is when I came back from Manchester, innit? Do you know? After the TB. Yeah, after the TB. So this is where my life, so I was living, where did they put me in? I was living in Ealing Baldway. I was living in Ealing Baldway in a bread and breakfast. From there, I was living in Bremen and Bexford from there. As I was doing that, I got into a PST, uh, PTS course, railways. Got my railway card. Started earning a little bit of money from the railways. But then I ended up being on the railways. I said to myself, this is not your passion, Gullet. Like, you, this is this is not you. You've got you've got something that you need to uh, motivate people and inspire people for. And you're not inspiring no one on the railroad tracks. So I said to myself, let me go into uh, personal training. Got into personal training. As I got into pace in the training, I'm still a person in training as you speak. Um, then I start, I went to my probation office. As I went to my local probation office that I used to go there ever since I was young. I knocked on their door. I said to them, you know what? I want to do some voluntary work here. Done some amazing voluntary work with them. Um, then they, start, they started loving me. They said, yo, this guy's amazing. Then head office, Linda. She runs, she's the director of the probation service. She came down, she invited me to the Waterloo base in headquarters in Waterloo. And she's mentioned to me, um, yeah, she's like, oh, um, yeah, you're amazing. She started crying. She heard my story. Then then they started letting me speak on stages and stuff. Then I started training probation officers because I feel like they, they were not emotionally in touch with us and they were just doing their job. And if they were started connect, getting connected and started asking me certain situations like how's your family and how's your upbringing and stuff like that maybe I could have avoided a lot of things so this is where I was trying to give them some experience and some advice from my side of things eventually as I was doing that I started doing that for a while and then obviously I started getting onto my YouTube like a, like eight months ago and what made you get on YouTube what was, was my mate big up my mate Bobby Kazanga check him out big ego and Hackney FC he's a good friend of mine I come on his interview Big Ego, isn't he got a channel? Yeah, he's got a big. He's got a channel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can check out his thing as well. He's. Cool. I, think I've, I think I've come across that. Yeah, he's my pal, man. He's good pal, yeah. man. Me and him, my, he's he. I kept it real with him. He kept, so he's my pal as well. So, so you I, were watching his videos, were you, and thinking no, I can do that? No, he invited me on his show. Oh, I see. Just gotcha, like this. Gotcha. And people started falling in love with me, and they yeah, said, "You know what? You're amazing. Yeah, Why don't yeah. you start your own thing?" I'm like, really? Then I just got my phone out. And the first story I did was kidnapping that went wild. Mm. And then before you know it, yeah, man, I started doing my thing. Um, I'm currently got two charities that I'm doing. One of the charities for people that come out of prison. Um, and obviously as I came out of prison and I didn't have no help, I just, I feel like there's a lot of people that want to change, but they don't have that right support in place for them when they get out. Government doesn't do shit for them. And they don't do fuck all, man. They just, you get recalled quicker than you get a job, mate. I'm telling you, and that's, that's the saddest thing. Yeah, we've seen it with Pepsi Watson. Yeah, literally. So um, as that happened, um, I started making my charity. As I was done my charity, I started selling T-shirts. So these are these T-shirts that I start selling. This is for you, by oh, the way. Oh, I love that color as well. That's you. That's you, yeah. I'll be going to the gym in that. Really and appreciate the, that. Yeah. And it's got Eiffel C. That's, that's beautiful. Notice. And on the back, it's got and Inspire. Thanks, Gulad. Before we expire. Yeah. And all the profits going to my charity. And yeah, man, it's just for people because, yeah, man, and it's amazing, man. Oh, sweet, man. Is, and as you it? can see, I've got it on as well here. And it's amazing, man. I love it. I love it. At first, I was trying to gather money from people, but I felt like people were not willing to give something. But I felt like mm. I took money out of my own pocket, mm. bought some T-shirts, and I said, you know, that profit can go to that. And I've raised now three grand from that. Yeah. And I've got another two grand to raise. And yeah. I've got another few other things but they can see on my channel and i don't want to bore them yeah yeah all your links are going to be in the description yeah. box below the video everything you're doing and um you've just got that beautiful spirit about you as well as being a very good storyteller very charismatic you just got that genuine spirit that genuine soul i'm happy man i'm, yeah. I'm happy the fact that i was given a second chance man mm. i thought it was all over man see you love life 
Yeah, yeah man, yeah, I'm happy, you got man. That in your eyes. Yeah, and man, I'm yeah, happy, man. Yeah. And I love to inspire people. That's my job. Yeah. Like, I get. I used to get thrills out of terrorizing people. Mm. I used to lose, I used to be a red rug rat, but now I get thrills out of helping people. Yeah. That gives me what energy. That gives me power. Yeah. Yeah. That keeps me young. Mm. These people think I'm 20. <laughs> they probably think I'm 20 if they tell me. <laughs> I can't tell them my age. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> idiot. I'm like, I was surprised when you told me, Rachel, when we were walking in. Yeah. So who else have you done collaborations with? I've done f um, Friends of Harami. He's a very good guy. He's a rapper. He reached out to me. He's verified and he's got millions and millions of views on YouTube. Wow. He's, he, he watched my story. And mm. so you know what? Exactly how you reached out. He reached out to me. He's like, mm. come interview yeah. me. And I just love people like that, man. Yeah. It's just genuineness, man. Did you do anything with Yami? He's such a good guy. Oh, yeah. Well. Big man. Yeah. Well, Uncle Yams. Big <laughs> Uncle Yams. <laughs> Uncle Yami. Yami yeah, told me I learned a lot of things from Uncle Yami. We done that story regarding that uh, that Somalian fella getting raped, um, unfortunately in a life of prison. Oh. Um, and, Is that on your channel? Yes, on my channel, and yeah, it's not nice. Yeah, big shout out to Yami. Um, we've done a big, I think it was like four four hour podcast with Yami. If you not people haven't seen that on the True Crime podcast playlist. And Yami also just radiates that positive energy. He's just always smiling, always glowing. And he, he would, you know, he'd absolutely give you the shirt off his back. So huge shout out to Yami as well. Big up Uncle Yams. Yeah, yeah. And um, what's your plans of your channel from here? Well, my plans are for my channel from here is um, Sky's the Limit, start my own podcast. Hopefully I'm going to start writing books. Because I've got a lot of knowledge that I can pass on. I'm going to start making my books and stuff like that. Um, start, I'm, I'm going around to schools now. I do talks for schools. So I'm doing one in East Sussex. I've done one in Northwest London. What was the day. reception like at, the, at, your, at your school talks? It's amazing, man. They love, man, because they watch me on my YouTube. Did they? And then they ask the teachers to get you in. Yeah, yeah. that's what happens. Yeah. We like him for that. So yeah, so yeah, I'm going in there, and it's just something that I was doing for. And it's amazing, man. I How can't... long is your talk in the school? Is it like an hour? Hour, yeah, hour and fifteen minutes. And do they ask questions at the end? Yeah. So, what did you learn from that? And um, do you do you want him back? Um, and then, yeah, we love him. How does it feel when like you see how engaged they are? I just love it, man. I just do it on the streets. So if you see me, if you see me on my channel, my Instagram page as well, I go around everywhere. I sell my t-shirts to everyone. So where I go around, I can see the love. That I've, I'm creating out here. Yeah, I, I get big cars stop me and say, "Yo, we love you, inspire, keep it up." <laughs> a mother, a mother, a mother. Random mother said, "Inspired for change, are you okay?" So, what? Where do you know me from? YouTube. My <laughs> son watches you. I'm like, wow. Yeah, that's when you know life is real. Yes. And social media is serious. So, if people watching want to get a t-shirt like this, how do they do that? Just go on what link, what link we're going to put down Now what you can do, now? yeah. In, in the meantime, what you can do is come on my Instagram. If you guys have Instagram, I have not set it up my website. I'm going to do that as soon as before um, this video is uploaded, fingers crossed. And then I will have a website on my Instagram. And yeah, I'll probably send you the link and you can attach it to this video or this interview. Yeah, yeah. This podcast. Man, I've just sat here being absolutely riveted by your stories. I'm sure people watching this, they've been equally engaged. So if you want to support Gulag, go down to the links below this video. Check out his channel. Like I said, it's growing fast. And these videos are like, pow, pow, pow. The stories, the energy, the charisma. It's, it's all hitting the spot. That's why his channel's growing at the rate it is. Like I said in the beginning, you know, there's so many people got stories out there and lived lives, but they just don't know how to tell them. And um, take some lessons from Gulag if you want a, a master class in storytelling, definitely. So it's no doubt his channel is just going to be massive in no time because of that ability and because, more importantly, his heart and soul is in it and he's trying to do the right thing with the T-shirts and restore his karma and help the kids in the schools and help people getting out of prisons. And that's so important when the government is doing jack shit for them, cl closing down the youth centres and recalling people like this and that, like they did with Petra Watson, help. like we saw on this channel. Yeah. It's crazy, but it's all big business for them, you know. They don't give the kids anything. They end up in prison. Contracts are in the tens of billions a year. It's absolutely sickening. So, all right. Please um, let us know what you thought about this video in the comments. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Subscription logo is in the bottom corner of the screen. Thanks to Joe and James coming out. We're on a free day, podcast day again. So it's going to be a long one. So huge thank you to those guys for their commitment. 
And um, thank you, all of you guys, for watching it. But most importantly, thanks to Gulad for coming out here from London and uh, filling the room with his energy and his atmosphere no today. Problem, man. Thank absolutely, you, man. absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, well done. Thank you. Thank you yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cheers. Classic. Yeah. Top yeah. guy.